21 or Ehud 9 Nasi of 2013, according to church calendar. The topic for today, as was mentioned prior, history of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church or history of the Ethiopian Orthodox Wahiro Church in the West. And of course, that in itself is a watershed moment because we have had the opportunity to have our church named twice. And of course, the panelists for today will be the head administrator himself, for most Archman Drive, Abba Gabriel Sosuoli Samuel Nagato, who is not only the head administrator for the Archdiocese of the Caribbean and Latin America, working closely and assisting his eminence, Abunataria, but he's also a very experienced administrator throughout the Archdiocese, having been the local administrator for Guyana, have been presently still is the local administrator for Antigua and Barbuda, and is presently acting as local administrator for the church in Jamaica. He will open with five minutes remarks, uh, telling a little bit about himself and about what he will be presenting for on this topic. The second presenter will be Melaka Gennett S. Ayale Zion, who is the local administrator for the Ethiopian Orthodox Spirit Church in Bermuda. We also, uh, though it might have not have been presented uh, in the program, but we will also invite S. Amar Salati Jacob, who is the local administrator for the Ethiopian Orthodox Spirit Church in Barbados and priest in charge for Edus Paulos. Uh, Ethiopian Orthodox Quaido Church Parish. And we also have Kes Gabriel Xavier Xavier Rana. He is the local administrator for the Ethiopian Orthodox Quaido Church in Wardloop and Martin. Uh, I am your moderator for this evening's uh, panel discussion. Uh, Evangelist Brother Paulus, who is the secretary of the Archdiocese and Council Evangelical Services Department. So, without further ado, I will now invite our head administrator, then uh, Melek Kenneth Kes Haelizion, then Kes Ama Salati Jacob, and then Kes Xavier to give five minutes presentation, opening remarks, and then after that, we'll get into the meat of the presentations. Thank you very much, Archman Dwight. Okay, thank you, Brother Paulos, and uh, thank the moderator, and thank you, everyone. I greet you uh, and observe the protocols, including His Grace Apunatadios, or Archman Dwight's, and brothers, uh, sorry, uh, elders clergy, which is priests, deacons, brothers and sisters. So good afternoon. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, necessarily for me to talk about myself. Uh, 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 you know me, I am your humble servant. That's all. Uh, but uh, I don't know who I am. Uh, coming to 2013 in uh, the Western calendar uh, to Antigua in Barbuda. Uh, since then, I am here to serve in the Caribbean Latin America. I appointed by his the direction of His Grace Abunitadios as head administrator so since 2017. Since then, uh, we're trying to you know, modify something, which is, you know, since I am appointed as aid administrator, once I am appointed to assist his grace and assist the archdiocese of the Caribbean Latin America, uh, I was, you know, I had a zealous spirit, you know, which is, you know, our forefathers, you know, trying to 
put things in place. Always, you know, when you are when you build a house, you have to have stages of building. First, you have to put a foundation, and after the foundation, after that, you have to put a sides, windows, doors, and so on. After that, you have to put a roof. And after that, not even enough, you have to put a decoration, a necessary decoration to the house, uh, which is including lights, telephone, all cabinets, beds, you know, drops, well, and so on, you know, that's how it became house became house, fully, you know, served, fully house. So our forefathers tried, not tried, put things in place by order. We are reaching the time now we are establishing the Arkadarasian Council and the Arkadarasian Executive Committee, you know, you know, even including the evangelism department, uh, you know, even including PR, including, you know, communication, which is like, for instance, Facebook, social media and the websites and kind of thing is start and tongue out. But when I do all, when we do all these things, not by myself, including, you know, the whole, my brothers and sisters too, you know, uh, together. Uh, that's all a little bit, you know, trying to work uh, with, uh, like a handicap, I know, but moving slowly, but doing something always, you know, uh, thank to be God until the coronavirus came hit and hit, you know, the whole diocese and the whole world. But uh, we was progressing well, you know, I cannot say anything else more than that. When I reached to Antigua, Antigua was just used to use in the church, uh, which is in the Syrian, uh, sharing with the Syrian Orthodox Church. But, you know, finally they decided not to be anymore over there. They start in something somewhere in the Liz land. So thank to be God, uh, by the support of the brothers and sisters from overseas in, you know, in the country, we are, you know, put things in place by God's grace and by the support of all brothers and sisters, you know, thank to be God, we are establishing church in, in Antigua, the first Ethiopian Orthodox Church, St. Mary of Zion, you know, last time, the, sorry, the 27th of June, we are consecrated, you know. Uh, you know, this is not a platform to speak about myself, but uh, better than me, uh, Brother Paulus know how the establishment and the history of the Antigua and Barbuda Church. I would like to let Brother Paulus, maybe if it is necessarily to speak about the history of the church, Brother Paulus, uh, uh, will be speak, uh, but you know, the same thing, what was happening in Guyana, when I was reaching Guyana 2014, uh, the Guyana church was almost, uh, you know, demolished, you know, which is especially the headquarter. Uh, we have a, a mission house, even apartment in the back, all just became abandoned places. You know, the members was desperate, you know, almost they give up, you know, they was ready even, you know, we was orthodox, you know, but not anymore. Some kind of thing is that, cause that's how I found it, you know, a kind of a bunch of family businesses. I found it, you know, people ready to take, you know, that kind of, you know, properties, things and that. So, you know, Thank to be God. God always have ways, you know, how to take care of his business, you know, his church, you know. Unexpectedly, I was rich in Guyana. May God bless his sister with her honestly. Always, you know, she is our main supporter, you know, the backbone, you can say, in Guyana church. All the brothers and sisters including, you know, we renovate the house. You know, it was a house of Pejan. It was a house of wrath. It was a house of things, not because the place was all, almost abandoned, the back apartment, people had a privilege, just a small penny they pay and they just live in, you know, kind of uh, what you call it, a jungle, a hiding of, you know, the criminal places. 
So now, thank God, God help us. You know, we remove all that thing is to start to renovate the upstairs, downstairs, the church, in the, in the apartment. It was a swampy. You can found, you know, in the bottom of the apartment, you know, anaconda, even maybe alligator. So sometimes, you know, how swampy and, you know, you know, it was scary, you know, even to go there, you know, so, but thank God, you know, thank God, by God's grace, me and Sister Sarwuta and the other brothers and sisters together we stand, we renovate the place, the place start grow, and after that, when I was appointed a head administrator, I realized I need an assistant, make sure to have a permanent priest. For Guyana, we brought a Bhagavad Mariam, a commandant of Bhagavad Mariam, a Bhagavad Mariam now is a permanent priest. For Guyana, since he been there, he had more development, you know, more development, even, you know, how Guyana is most of the time, they have a tide in water, which is, you know, flood. When the flood come in, it used to be in the church, you know. So now they, you know, build, you know, big concrete walls, a big concrete, you know, floor, uh, all over the apartment, in this, you know, the apartment renovate. Well, now if you see it, even the, the brothers assisting us, the priests, he live in America, the sister, the one. By the way, I would like to mention her name. I forgot, you know, may God bless the one, the sister, a dedicated, standing, long standing member. She live in America. She give us, you know, all the zincus. You know. If you uh, think my brothers and sisters, we are taking out 10 bags of, you know, poo-poo and rat, uh, rat and uh, pigeon poo-poo in the top of the floor. 10 bags. Okay. Uh, uh, it was. I what I am trying to tell you is, you know, how we are in the church is struggling. You know, we need more focus on concern. We talk about sometimes, you know, history build this, expanding this. Sometimes, you know, the same thing. We losing some of our churches. You know, in Guyana, I heard in the history, uh, they used to had, you know. Uh, uh, 20 some two or 23 churches you know from 23 churches now we have even functional churches holy trinity and saint mary mostly we have them in eskibo eskibo only is family members you know two family members so recently i heard even one of the indian brothers is is passed away uh, sister Elias, which is her husband the deacon only and her sister in left you know so how is difficult and complicated even, you know, to reach them sometimes. I heard Abba even harder to reach them, especially since this COVID happened. How the critical condition we have, we have two lots of land over there. You know, we have a, a land in Linden, that land was the place the people years they used to put uh, a thing, what you call it, a, 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 a garbage. That was the place, our Orthodox church, that was, that had a church, you know. The emperor, you know, you know, contribute. Even he asked the parliament approve for him. He built two churches in Guyana, which is, you know, uh, Saint Mary and uh, Medhani Alam. I think is Medhani Alam Church in Linda. The church is not anymore now, but the people use it to 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 try to trash the garbage. You know. So now we remove all that thing. Is we are fencing the land. We trying to even make a little activity, which is to put uh, a block making a machine and so on to build the community to see, make sure the place is active and so on. You know, you know, we have two lots of land in uh, Esquibo. It was in danger. Uh, nobody's not in charge of uh, the Guyana. If you see, if you're asking the, in charge of the church, when I reach in, in there, they don't have no uh, deed, you know, even the headquarters, the Holy Trinity, the land deed, we found it somewhere else. You know. May God bless the sister Buddha. We have a church again, St. Gabriel Church, you know, the sugar factory, you know, given to for, uh, for the church. But uh, since uh, we hand over from the sugar, take it from, sorry, we take it from the sugar factory, it was not changed the deed in the name of the church. It was still until in the name of the sugar came factory, the sugar factory, sorry. So now, may God bless the sister again, you know, 
you know, we are, you know, working hard, advising her lawyers and so on and so on. We don't know, we are not recognized or acknowledged even in Guyana law by the new law as thirsty. Our organization was not, it was registered in the Queen time, English Queen time, in the English colony time, 1959, I think I heard, you know. From then, you know, a new law was not recognized as Again, you know, Sister Sabuta always is a standing uh, member, which is she is a board of trustee. We work on that, you know, to get more legitimate uh, registered uh, trustee, trustee put in places and the change, you know, from uh, Cadisco, you call it, you know, Cadisco, something the sugar factory name, you know, into in our church name, saying Gabriel property. If you see the property is in the middle of the rich people land, you know, that is expensive land. So, it was abandoned when I reached in there. The church was big bush of, you know, the people even say, you know, this church is a Kirsten church, you know, a Kirsten church. That's why the church is abandoned. My fellow brothers and sisters, what I would like to, we are not talking history, this year, this man, you know, this day established. We have to talk of uh, the tribulation, with the way how we went through to the difficulty of the church, you know, that is the part of our history. So, Thank to be God, you know, we work all these things, you know, we have you now secured the deed, all our papers is secured you now, we have, you know, a proper documentation systems and so on. I put in the, uh, what you call it, a board of trustee, the church starts running by the committee and so on. Thank to be God, since Abba been there, uh, I hope uh, Abba have well knowledge of skill about administration. Everything is time to be God, but we secured our church, even the place, if you see it, you know, it became, you know, uh, legible or available, someone can leave, you know, it, because when the rain falls, falling, the whole apartment is full of you know, rain, you have to put all over the places, pots and uh, plastic things, but, uh, plastic uh, uh, buckets, and uh, even reaching from the upstairs to downstairs, the whole church will be wet you know because of the condition of the apartment so you know my fellow brothers and sisters this is uh, the part uh, what i am trying to contribute you know you know how you know antigua uh, recently we are consecrated the church by his grace prayer and supplication you all my brothers and sisters in support and prayer uh, you know so better than me i would like to brother paulos to give you a little brief explanation about the establishment of the Antigua and Barbuda Church. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I will do that later on, but for now we will allow for Melek Enet Kessel-Ailizion to give his introduction as well uh, as relates to uh, his uh, coming to the church, his uh, ascension uh, to local administrator and what uh, has transpired for the development uh, of the church in Bermuda historically, and of course, what is contending now. Please go right ahead, uh, Malachi Kegene. Good evening, everyone. His Grace, Visual Bonatarios, Archmandrite Abba Gabriesos, and all of the Archmandrites, fathers, uh, priests, uh, deacons, uh, brothers and sisters, good evening from Bermuda. Just like to share with you a brief introduction about the uh, uh, establishment of the church in Bermuda. And uh, I would like, if possible, to also ask uh, one of the founding members of our church, the brother Haile Maskell, if he would also like, if he's uh, available to uh, share with us his uh, first hand views about the establishment of the church in Bermuda. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church was established on the 13th of July, 1975 by Abba Laikimara Mandefro, now who later became uh, Archbishop Isak. Bermuda, uh, which comprises, comprises uh, 150 small islands, is situated in the Atlantic Ocean, a small country, some 22 miles long and uh, one or two miles wide at the widest part. 
It has a very high population density for its size, approximately 60,000 people. Uh, the Spanish uh, mariner Juan de Bermudez uh, goes, gives the credit for discovering the islands, although his uh, crew did not inhabit, they left. It wasn't until 1609 that the British Admiral Sir George Summers on his uh, ship, the Sea Venture, on its way to, uh, from the UK to assist the struggling colony in Virginia, USA. This boat was laden with uh, supplies, uh, came to be shipwrecked on Bermuda's reefs. And from this mishap, the colonization, uh, colonization sorry, in 1612 of Bermuda began. Bermuda has remained under the flag of Great Britain for more than three and a half centuries. Its closest nearest point is uh, Cape Hatteras in North Carolina, approximately uh, 775 miles away and London is 3000 miles away. We enjoy a climate average, uh, averaging 70 degrees and uh, rainfall over the 12 months evenly spread. Uh, about 50 inches of rain we, uh, we uh, take in, uh, we um, usually are, are blessed by God to, to have yearly. Our water supply is dependent on the rain, so we have our houses made to uh, retain and to collect the rainwater. In 1974, five Bermudian men went to Jamaica in search of information regarding the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. They were instructed by uh, Abalai Kemaraman Defro, who later became a Bunisak, and uh, they were instructed in the teachings and were later baptized. In 1975, uh, Abunisak came to Bermuda and officially established the church here. Several candidates were baptized, and uh, in other visits, hundreds of men, women, and children have been added to the membership. Until 1984, this congregation did not have a permanent place of worship. However, in, 19, in July 1984, after negotiations with the Bermudan government, we were able to obtain a church building located in St. George's Parish, which is presently Debreganet Emmanuel. This was previously used as a chapel by the military forces. I would like now to uh, request uh, to ask if uh, Brother uh, Haile Meskel of Bermuda can uh, add a bit of detailed uh, personal um, addition to this presentation. Brother Haile Meskel, are you able to, to join us? If he's not uh, available at this point in time, he can always join us uh, when he does come in, Kessie. So you just let me know. Here he is. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Add your video and unmute your mic. Yes, beautiful. Yes, Brother Mascal, yes, beautiful. Can you unmute your mic, please? Thank you very much. Okay, just, just some little housekeeping. Now, what transpires when it comes to Zoom? If there is two persons who are listening to this session and have on their mics you will have that feedback so it is advised if you have someone who is in the same room ask them to go to somewhere else or if you are using two devices choose one so that we don't have that um, feedback okay thank you very much father i think we adjusted the issue Well done, go right ahead. First, may I have a word from the first kid who was a hard to hum like her, man. Need to see your face, though, it'll be nice. 
Greetings, Your Grace. Archimandrites, Mandrites, all clergy administrators and members of the Ethiopian Tewahedo Orthodox Church at home and abroad throughout the diaspora. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. I am Otto Haile Mescal, one of the founding members of the EOC. The following is a brief synopsis of the establishment of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church in the Iowa of Bermuda. Please continue, Haile Mescal. In the name of the Holy Trinity, the one God, Amen. In the early spring of 1972 to 1973 AD, many brothers and sisters throughout our islands began congregating at one another's homes, in open fields, up in the hills, and in barns and sheds and public parklands. Many of us were reasoning and discussing and debating our social conditions, political conditions, and historical record. But most importantly, our spiritual and religious conditions and how the global conditions of mankind affected us here in Bermuda. This is not the first time people came together to discuss such issues, but in this case, we were well aware of the visit to Bermuda in the late 1960s of His Imperial Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie I, Emperor of Ethiopia, as we were historically informed, descending from the lineage of King Solomon, who is mentioned in the Holy Bible. This truth and the prevailing knowledge greatly inspired many of us with great zeal and a hunger and thirst after righteousness to learn more and more. As it is written in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 6, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. As we traveled on this journey, we were gathered together with maps of the world, dictionaries, and Bibles. The King James Version, the New English Translation, and the Douay Version, which is an older version than the King James. If anyone in the group did not know a particular sentence or word, this would be explained by another through observation on the map and reading from the dictionary. Oftentimes we would reason through daylight hours up until midnight and sometime to early morning. When we left our respective gatherings to go to our homes, it was as if we had been to university classes. As we now acknowledge, we were being guided by the Holy Spirit. When we gathered, sometimes we beat drums and sang hymns. Some of the hymns were, give me that old time religion and Ethiopia land of our fathers. There are many brothers and sisters whose names are too numerous to mention briefly. Suffice to say that when we gathered in groups, it may have been 50 of us or more. At any given time, and many help with the establishment of our church. In the spring and summer of 1974, a brother from Jamaica visited our island, a friend of one of our elders who eventually became a priest of our church, Keskadane Mariam. His name was Brother Isaiah Kelly. While he was reasoning with us, he mentioned to us the Ethiopian Orthodox Church Conference, which was being held in Jamaica in Kingston in the month of August at the Ebenezer Church at Maxfield Avenue. He admonished us that if we were interested, we should send a delegation to, to attend, at least as observers. To this admonition, we responded by raising funds to send a delegation of brothers to attend. Some brothers and sisters raised funds for this course from the eastern end of our island to the western end of our island, from St. David's and St. George's Parish to Somerset and Dockyard, the western end of our island. The delegation chosen to go to the inaugural EOC conference was as follows. Brother Joseph Place, who was baptized and became Castor de Madden. 
Brother Gladwin Otterbridge, who was baptized and became Keskadane Mariam. Brother Dennis Smith, who was baptized and became Brother Takle Wold. Brother Leela Simmons, who was baptized and became Brother Hamde Mariam. And yours truly, Brother Teal, who was baptized and became Brother Haile Mascal. The five delegates were baptized at the conference and then we returned. We began the Ethiopian Orthodox Church mission. We established an office on Cool Street in the city of Hamilton, Bermuda. And there we began teachings, i.e. the seven sacraments, five pillars of faith, and a book which was later given to us by Asafa Yamane Berhan from the church in New York entitled Panorama, A Brief History of Ethiopian Orthodox Church Origins and Belief. We were overseen by Abaleki Maria Mandefro, who would later be elevated to Archbishop Abu Naishek. Our first rush of service was held at the Engel Street Youth Center under the auspices and through the great assistance of Brother Samuel Wilson, a Bermuda Youth Coordinator and Manager of the Pembroke Youth Center on Engel Street in Pembroke Parish. Over the years, the church held services at a variety of locations, and most notably the Dandy Town Sports Club and the Prospect Gymnasium in Prospect, Devonshire. In 1987, the government of Bermuda granted us a permanent church building in the parish of St. George's, located on Old Military Road. The church was consecrated on June the 6th, 1987 by Abu Naishek. In attendance for the congregation were the members of the House of Assembly, most parliamentarians attended. After the service, we all participated in a great feast. The church was given the name Dabrakenet Emmanuel Ethiopian Orthodox Church, meaning Mountain of Paradise, God with us. There have been many events which have helped to bring the Ethiopian Orthodox Church in Bermuda to fruition. Many highs and lows and much struggle. We thank the Bermuda government, the people of Bermuda, who have assisted us greatly in our endeavors which is self-evident today. Many of the biblical references which led us to the knowledge of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church are as follows. Genesis chapter two, verse 13, Psalms 87, verse four, the prophet Amos chapter nine, verse seven, the book of Acts chapter eight, verses 26 to 40, and the book of Revelations chapter five, verse five, to name a few. This faith is the true faith which one must know from within oneself through prayer, through worship, through study, and through guidance by the Holy Spirit. There are many acts and activities performed by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church here in Bermuda, too numerous to mention here. Suffice to say, the church is respected in the religious community and a member of the Bermuda Ministerial Association. Many dignitaries and parliamentarians and community leaders have participated in our services. There has been great work performed and there is greater work still, expansion and evangelization yet to be performed here in our native island of Bermuda. We are appreciative of our clergy and administrators who keep the wheels of our church turning. May God continue to guide our church fathers and all church scholars and members from the least to the greatest. At present, our administrators by our local clergy are our priest in charge, Cass Haile Zion Simons, assistant priest in charge, Cass Paulus Gota, Cass Sarah Farrell Broadbelt, together with deacons, acolytes, and assistant deacon. Our membership is small but growing, like a grain of mustard seed or a cedar tree seed which grows into a mighty tree. We are proud to be in union with one of the oldest churches upon earth, if not the oldest. We give thanks unto God for his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie I, who commanded Abuna Basilius to send priests to the west, 
so that we in the diaspora would have a depth, knowledge, and understanding of our faith and the faith of our fathers. The church was sent to us by Christ himself. May God bless all of us throughout the diaspora and all our families, respectively. May he grant us peace and protect us from all harm. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the one God, amen. Thank you, Brother Haile Maskell, for your words. Many of these times, I was such a, a, a little child when the church was established here in Bermuda. I was about 10 years old, but I do remember the, the local priests, Kes uh, Kedane Mariam and Kes Wolde. They came to my house at one time because my father was in charge of a building which they were hoping to acquire. I remember them in their dark robes and I remember they came to visit my house I was just 10 years old, and uh, I didn't know at that time that I would become a member of the church, but thanks to God, all things uh, happen through the, the work of the Holy Spirit and through the will of our Lord. I don't want to take up too much time. Maybe we can go on to the next, uh, uh, the next presenter, not to take too much time, unless there are other comments expected of us. Thank you very much, Jesus, and thank you very much, uh, Ato Haile Mascal. Very comprehensive. We look forward to uh, uh, hear some of the comments and questions that will be raised uh, in due course. Now, I will take this opportunity thank to you. invite uh, Kes uh, Ama Selassie Jacob, uh, local administrator for Barbados. Uh, we're going in that order because Barbados would then have been the next uh, country within the Archdiocese of the Western Hemisphere to be uh, established. Uh, please welcome uh, Kes Ama Salasi Yaka. Kes is uh, Ama Salasi Yaka, are you present? Thank you, Brother Evangelist Moderator. Greetings to his Grace, Monetarius, Archbishop of the Caribbean in Latin America, Head Administrator, Abagabi Yusus, Archmandrake Abagabi Yusus, Archmandrake Kevin Mariam, Archmandrake Heidi Mikkel, Abba Gabit Sadiq, other fathers and brothers and sisters. I thank God that I am able to make a small presentation on the establishment of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church in Barbados. I have to make a little explanation because I was not expecting to be on. I didn't prepare anything for this. I prepared for tomorrow. That's what I was doing. But since you asked me and I, what I can do, I will say. So here I make an effort and I hope it is acceptable. I want to go back to 1983. But in 1983, I haven't been born in Tobago, but grew up in Barbados. Paid a visit with my infant son, who later became baptized. His name was Azikwe at the time. Paid a visit to my native land, Tobago, and at that time, that was the end of 1983, my mother who, she was Enid Coppin, she knew the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Um, I have to say she knew the priests. And she also was aware that two of her sons, that's Wolde Jesus Coppin that you know, and another son, um, the one who did some of the icons in the church in Holy Trinity in Tobago, that they were in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. And she looked at me and she said, go where your brothers are. Where they go, you go to. So I, I, I had to follow obediently. And I went to a church service then. And immediately afterwards, I sat down and had what I call an extensive conversation, but it was what had been brief with Abahadis, who was serving in 
Tobago at the time. That's my first encounter, actual physical encounter, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. After I returned to Barbados, immediately I went into some a journalism job. And while I was involved in the journalism, here in Barbados, there was a brother from England who had returned to live in Barbados. He was Barbadian. He returned here with his family. I knew him as Matthew Small. I'm sure that his baptismal name is, I think it's Matthew, but I, can, I cannot confirm that right now. He and his family were living in Barbados. They were doing their business. And he used to go to church in Trinidad, of course, because there, there was no Ethiopian Orthodox church in Barbados. So that, that was remarkable for me. I met with him and he gave me books on the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. And he told me what he could, whatever he could tell me and encouraged me. Um, I have to say that the, the communication between me and the church in Tobago did not continue immediately after that meeting with Abba Hadis. What did happen is that after I returned to Barbados, I shared what I had got from Abba Hadis and also what I got from Brother Matthew Small with some brothers in my community. And that um, stopped our interest more in Ethiopia and Ethiopian Orthodox Church. All the time I said, I'm, I'm not joining or anything. I'm just getting inter interested. I jumped now to around 1991, 1992. When Wolditinsai, who later became Deacon Wolditinsai, returned from Jamaica. He had gone to Jamaica to do tertiary studies. I think it was at the Journalism in, um, Training Institute. Associated, I think it's Associated University of West Indies. But the point is that it was not secondary school, it was tertiary. And while he was there, he got baptized in the church in Jamaica. And when he returned to Barbados, shared his experience with us here. And so we set up a group meeting at each one another's homes to discuss and work on how to get the Ethiopian Orthodox Church established in Barbados. In the midst of all that, we wrote to His Grace of Unitarius. And at the end of 1993, His Grace sent a delegation, Kes Abraham Springer, Deacon Hamare Mariam, LaRose, who is our Assistant Secretary General now, and Brother Marcos Modest. I can testify to this because they stayed at my home. When they came, they met us, the group. They held public meetings, and they also met with then Dr. Ashton Gibson, who was a bishop in, I think, a spiritual Baptist. Afterwards, I, I, I have to say it because it, I don't know exactly what went on in Trinidad, but I'm sure that they returned and they made their report to His Grace. I think they also wrote a, a letter to His Grace following their visit. And in February 1994, I got an invitation or a call to come to Trinidad for baptism. So I picked up my son that I mentioned earlier, the one that I went with in 1983. He was with me at the time. And we got baptized. There were, there was then Dr. Ashton Gibson. He, he was baptized Zacharias. Um, Petros, who has become Kes Petros. Then there is Akhili Brahan, one of our foundation members who lives in the United States and never forgets us. Where he lives, he, the close by church is the Coptic, so he's been attending the Coptic church, but he never forgets us. And then, of course, there was 
my son and myself. My son was baptized and the Zion. Afterwards, coming out. After we got baptized, we returned to Barbados with official recognition in that we were as we were recognized by his grace as a preparation committee for the establishment of the church in Barbados. Just the members that we had. The newly baptized Zacharias, his wife also got baptized subsequently. And we also were going to church like Matthew Small did, going to church in Trinidad. Living in Barbados and we have to go to church in Trinidad because no, there's no parish here. There's no church here. So at times, I think, I know for, for sure Easter, we went to church in Trinidad. August 1994, we went to church in Trinidad again on this occasion. His grace of Bonitadius ordained one priest and deacons. And that's how we get to Zacharias being ordained, along with deacons. And I mentioned my son who was with me at for the first visit. Oh, I have to say that when I went to the church in Tobago in 1983, my son, as an infant, he was not with me. He was with me in Tobago, but not with me at the church service. Thank God for our baptism then. So we had priests, deacons, and you continued as a mission, working to increase membership and so on until 1995. April 1995, His Grace of Bonitadius came with an other clergy, including Guest Abraham and deacons. I'm remembering then deacon Gabriel Amlak Matas, and I'm thinking the other deacon, or oh yes, deacon Gil, deacon Lucas Gill was also one. Um, I think deacon Gabriel, he was then deacon Gabriel Jesus, no, he's guest Gabriel Jesus. And I always remember uh, that um, visit with it, by his grace to come to open our parish, Sister Daniel. Sister Daniel is, was the sister of my godfather, Brother Adams. And she, having been born in Barbados, she desired, like he did, to see the church established in Barbados, so she wanted to see with her own eyes. And although she was in a wheelchair, she came from Trinidad to Barbados to participate in the opening of our parish. I always remember that. The parish was open in, at the end of April 1995 in a house that was next to Kes Zacharias residence in Long Gap, Spooners Hill, St. Michael. We were registered then as according to the, the law and custom in Barbados, um, registered as a charity. Many churches have been registered as charities. Some some, one or two, were registered by a, a legal, um, what do you call that, incorporation. All right, let me see. I reached, yes, we reached 1995. We have the parish opened, Guest Zacharias, priest in charge. And Guest Zacharias also then be, afterwards became Memhir Zacharias, and he also became the general secretary of the Archdiocese. And he worked on the visit of His Holiness of Bonapolis with his entourage to Barbados and other parts of the Caribbean. I was working in his office assisting as I could. So I can, I can say just a little bit because he was making the decisions, not me. I was just doing the, what am I call the secretarial work. His, grace, his Holiness of Bonapolis came to Barbados with his entourage of archbishops and priests and other clergy in July, 1995, held communion service at the same place that Abonatadius opened the parish in Long Gap, Spooners Hill. He also um, conducted an ecumenical service 
in Bridgetown at the one of the big Moravian churches. He held public lectures, filling the places. There was a reception, a reception by the Governor General. I have, I'm saying this part because of what happened. At the time, the, so the substantive Governor General was named Nita Barrow. She had been involved at a high level in the World Council of Churches. So as such, she knew the Holiness of Bonapolis from participation in the World Council of Churches. However, when he, when he came with his entourage, she was on sick leave. She was ill. And an acting governor general was at, at the time um, in charge of the reception at government house. The Amnita left her sick bed and came to the door. She didn't go in. She came to the door of government house to meet His Holiness of Bonapolis. And that stays with me. Also after our parish was open and after the visit of His Holiness, we got further assistance from Trinidad when His Grace sent priest to assist Zacharias. I'm here, I don't I think it was Memir Zacharias then. And I, I remember in particular Kes Amma Jesus Williams because he, he didn't just come to do a service and leave, he came and he stayed for a while. He conducted baptism instruction. He introduced Amharic and um, he did much church service, teaching and preaching and so on. Other clergy came from Trinidad from time to time assisting Kes Zacharias. Of course, His Grace of Bonapalius paid a number of pastoral visits in Kes Zacharias' time, staying at Kes Zacharias' home, which was next door to the church, the building that we were using for church. Or later, when Part of Kesakaris home became the church, the church, um, the church, not the church building. It became the sanctuary, a part of his home. And his grace of Bonatadius also visited and stayed at his home. Then I, then I say that his grace at one time he stayed at a hotel. Now, this is the, the little story about that hotel stay. At the time, Guest Zacharias had arranged through our mother church in Ethiopia for six monk priests to come to the Caribbean, to stay in Barbados for a while preparing to serve in the Caribbean and Latin America Archdiocese. And they were staying at the, the second place that we had the church, which was an a disused hotel building. It was. It used to be a hotel building, and we were using the halls, the recept, the hall section of it. The, um, it was a large, a large open room downstairs section. It was across the road from a hotel, and Kesakares knew the owner of the hotel, and through that kind of friendship. They arranged for when a Bonitad, His Grace of Bonitadius came, that His Grace stayed at that hotel. That's why I said stay at that hotel. The hotel was right across the road from where the church was. So it, it is like His Grace of Bonitadius coming to Barbados, repeatedly staying next door to the church. Those six priests that came, they went to serve in various places after the preparation, the preparation had to do with um, learning the language and the culture of the people. So learn of the language, that is English. They learned the English with a dear sister, elderly sister. She was Senator Viola Davis, and she was one of the noted Pan-Africanists in Barbados. From those priests, 
in Trinidad, you know about Wolde Jesus. In Jamaica, I expect you know um, Abba Tesfa Tesfa. Oh, forget the name now. Guyana, Abba Gabriel Dingle and Abba Heidi Georges. And Bermuda, you know Abba Gabriel Hewat. And Abba Tigil Ganet stayed in Barbados for a while before he went to the United States to serve there. So we had in Barbados six Ethiopian priests serving for a while with Kes Zacharias, and then it was came down to one staying serving with Kes Zacharias. As I said, I didn't prepare and thoroughly for this, so I'm kind of moving on quickly and jumping. Abbasigegane stayed and he served teaching the people and also baptizing. So through Zacharias' work, uh, Lika Maimaran, he, he became Lika Maimaran Zacharias. Through Lika Maimaran Zacharias' work, the priests who came to assist from Trinidad, particularly Kes Amayesus Williams, and who stayed for a while with us, that is Abbasigegane. We increased in membership little by little until what we are today. As I'm jumping, in 19, I don't remember the year exactly when Deacon Heidi Mikkel was ordained. And I mentioned Deacon Heidi Mikkel because of what I'm going to say about the commemorant Zacharias now. In the year 2000, the commemorant Zacharias, may you rest in peace, he passed away. And His Grace of Bonitadius came for the funeral here. Afterwards, Deacon Hailey Mikhail became deacon in charge for a while until the members, having been instructed, recommended certain persons for ordination. So His Grace came and ordained the Spectros. Yours truly, your humble servant, that's guess that I'm Hasselassie, and Deacon Rani Christos. So that means that we moved from the deacon in charge to priest in charge. So that was year 2000, November. Yes, November 2000, when the ordination was done. And Zacharias passed in May of the same year. Since then, we have continued struggle little by little. We had moved back to, to the Long Gap address, but not the same house as we started in, rather than the house next door where Zacharias used to live, is where we had the church after we moved back from the old hotel building at Hastings to Long Gap. So when His Grace came to do the ordination in 19, in November 2000, we were back at Long Gap in the, the larger next door house. Guess Zacharias had been using the house as his own place, so he'd been paying the rent and so forth. After he passed, the responsibility came to us and members pledged the rent and maintained their pledge for a while. When the pledges stopped, then we knew that we had to move because we could not, we didn't have the money to continue to pay the rent for that place on a continuous basis. We had that as a continu on a continuous basis. And then we moved to using for services, the YMCA building in Bridgetown. One of the things about Long Gap is Long Gap is kind of outside Bridgetown and it takes two buses or two sets of transportation to get there unless you live in that area. Whereas the YMCA is in Bridgetown and 
that central so members who want to go to church and have to use the bus will get one bus to get to the YMCA. We continued at the YMCA for some years and it was an old building and we knew from the start that I said because, the la because it's an old building, the time would come when the YMCA would have to do something about the building. Oh, oh. What the YMCA did after some years is they informed us they're ready to take action. I said the pichula. They're ready to take action and they demolished the building after we moved, of course. We moved from the YMCA building to where we are now, which is the St. Patrick's Cathedral. That's Roman Catholic Cathedral Hall. It's a church, it's a hall upstairs of the school, which is the, in the St. Patrick's Cathedral compound. St. Patrick's Roman Catholic Cathedral is associated with the St. Patrick's Roman Catholic School, which is in the same compound, the same same piece of land, large piece of land. Um, they have their presbytery, they have the bishop's home and everything in that place. And how we come to be there, the priest that was in charge, well, I think he was in charge of the cathedral at the time, the Roman Catholic priest, his name is, he was Father, Father Harcourt Blackett, but his, First name was not Harcourt. So when they made him a Monsignor, he became Monsignor Vincent. And he was involved also in Pan-African things. So on one of his visits or pilgrimage to Jerusalem, he found himself at our, at our church in Jerusalem and he observed how our church in Jerusalem is keeping the faith so well. And he was surprised and he was um, pleasantly surprised. He was glad. And when he came back from his pilgrimage and trip to Jerusalem, in discussion with him, when we were looking for some place, and after he admired our church, how it functioned in Jerusalem, I would have, I, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he said something that ended up with him saying Kessel, yes. One second, please. Guess it one second. Um, Deacon Amore, could you remove a particular person who, we, who is um, uh, who's attacking the church and attacking this situation, please? Remove him quickly, please. A Spanish uh, person. Okay, Kessis, I think we have addressed that uh, attack by the devil. You can go straight ahead. Thank you. So, yes, we are now at the, you know, use the St. Patrick's Roman Catholic Church Hall every Sunday and other things that we might need when they are not using the hall, of course. Um, through that experience of Monsignor Vincent of the Roman Catholic Church. That's a cooperation that has continued. He also became the chairman of the Barbados Christian Council along the way. I think I'm gonna stop there because as I said, I didn't prepare a thorough thing for this, but since I have reached to where we are now, I think I would pause. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kessis. Very comprehensive, and I must thank you for, uh, though you were not, that might have been an oversight on our part in terms of the organizing committee, please forgive us. Uh, but thank you so much, and you have shown the wealth of knowledge as regards to the history of the establishment of the church in Barbados. And I'm sure you will have more to add to that in terms of later on in our conversation. Uh, now we will go to our final presenter, uh, Kess Xavier, uh, Xavier Rahane. Uh, who is the local administrator for the Ethiopian Orthodox Kwahedo Church in Guadeloupe and Martinique. Go right ahead, Cassie. Thank you, Father Harcourt. Thank you, Father Harcourt. 
Also, if we may ask, while the presenters are presenting, please mute all of your mics. And also, if you can uh, take your cameras off, that will help with the bandwidth so that we can have better quality uh, for the presenters. When you are ready to ask a question, you raise your raise hand icon. The monitor, the, mon the moderator will acknowledge you. Then you could unmute your mic and your camera so folks can see you. You introduce yourself and then you start ahead. Okay, thank you so much for cooperating. Now we go to Kes Xavier. Excuse me. Uh, uh, greetings to His Grace Abunata Deus and to uh, our Archman Rights, Abba Gavre Jesus, Abba Gavre Mariam, and Abba Haile Mikael. Um, greetings to all my fathers and to my brothers, deacons, and to all the brothers and sisters. Uh, I'm happy to be here among you. Uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. So I will try to, uh, to present you the manners uh, God, uh, choose to establish the church um, here in Martinique because I'm, I'm, I'm living in Martinique and I go sometimes in Guadeloupe as uh, they call me to keep communion service. Uh, so I go to Guadeloupe uh, five, six times uh, per year, and we are linked also by uh, whatever uh, contact we have. But so I, I, I'm, uh, I will not be able to, to tell you precisely how the church had been established in Guadeloupe, but uh, I will present uh, the establishment of the church uh, of Martinique. Um, with uh, because I am living it and, and here in Martinique. So I would say that it starts to my uh, to my knowledge, it starts uh, on 2003. the the exact, uh, date is 2004, but I will say 2003 because um, the death of uh, one of our brother here in Martinique, uh, I feel uh, revealed the, the plan of God, I think now, today, but at that time we could not, we, we were not, we, what we uh, we were not uh, uh, um, we didn't know about that but whatever one of our brother uh, his name is uh, Berhane uh, Selassie he he was about to die and when he knew that he asked his wife to, to go to Trinidad to, to ask for his grace. Uh, he applied for, for, to, to be baptized. So that's what she do. She traveled, she went to Trinidad and then she, she met his grace, explained him uh, what was going and immediately his grace uh, sent one priest uh, I can't remember his name because I, I was not, uh, I didn't know about, I didn't know even about the church. I didn't know the church. So 
at that time, Kes Gabriel Selassie, he was deacon at that time. He, he, so he came, they, they both came to, to Martinique and they, they, they baptized the brother on his uh, bed as he was dying. And he died one day after his baptism. So that is why I feel that this moment is very important in uh, our story. And then after that, no, we don't. I didn't know about it. And one one year after, two thousand four, uh, my brother, uh, Walter Emmanuel, and me, we decided to go to. To Ethiopia mm, on our own uh, feeling. And then we said, okay, let us, uh, we had, uh, because of uh, our jobs, uh, of our work, we said, let us plan to go for the, for December the 7th. Uh, uh, sorry, January the 7th. But we didn't know about the church. We didn't know nothing. But we said, okay, they celebrate, um, they, they, they celebrate uh, the birth of our Lord that, uh, that day. So let us, let us go. Let us reach Ethiopia for that date. Because before we planned to, to go to Ethiopia, but, but we could not because of our uh, abilities. Of, uh, of our responsibilities, we could not. But that time we said, okay, let's just go. So we, we reached Ethiopia uh, January 7th. And then immediately we went by the church, by uh, Holy Trinity Church in Addis Ababa. And that time uh, the church was uh, full of people. And then we, when we reached the church, uh, at that time it was Abuna Paulos. And when we reached the church, so we, we, didn't, we didn't get into the church, but uh, we were just in the outside of the church. Then Abuna Paulos came out of the church with. Uh, some other fathers who were holding the tabot. Immediately, the tabot went out of the of the church. But we didn't know nothing about about uh, this tradition and what is tabot and everything. We understood that uh, some years after, so the tabot went out and the people rejoiced uh, himself and. So that, but we didn't understand nothing. After that, we went, uh, so we, we continue our trip and uh, we went to uh, Bahardar. Uh, we, we went to visit Bahardar and then, okay, after that, we went to La Libella. And from La Libella, so we were visiting the the churches of La Livella and we, our, our guide was a, a deacon of, uh, of the church. And because we were asking so many questions about uh, the, uh, the history, because we, we wanted to know about uh, that faith. So because we were asking him a lot, a lot of questions, he told us, I will, I will, uh, I will bring you. We will get to to bathe in a place where there is holy water. We say okay, with pleasure. So we went, and uh, when we bathe uh, under that water, calling from the, the the rock, immediately a rainbow. Uh, we saw a rainbow in the sky. So the deacon was very excited 
and very happy. So he told us, okay, let me bring you with, uh, to the bishop. We say, okay, with pleasure. So we went by the bishop and uh, we were uh, also <laughs> excited because when we saw the face of that bishop, uh, we, when we saw the face of, of that bishop, he was uh, looking like uh, our uncle. He resembled one of our uncles. So we were very excited and happy. And then we spoke with him and uh, without knowing exactly what we were doing there. But um, we asked, we, we, we ask him uh, without asking, without, um, without uh, discussing ourselves, uh, my brother and me, uh, we ask, we apply for the church to be established in Martinique. So that is what, that was, that it, that it, that it, it was not uh, um, a desire, uh, an expected desire, uh, ask uh, in a way uh, we didn't we didn't um, prepare anything. So, but I feel I traduce I traduce that like this. Uh, I translate I translate that like this. For me, uh, that was very miraculous. And so he said, okay. You go when you will return to Addis Ababa. He gave us so the the contact of uh, the patriarchate, and that and then when we returned to Addis, we went by the patriarchate, um, and at the patriarchate they gave us the contact of His Grace Abu Nathadeus, and then so we returned to Martinique. After that, I called His Grace, and I went to Trinidad for the next Easter, uh, 2004, Easter 2004, with my son, we went to, to, to visit the church in Trinidad. So His Grace, um, uh, so I, we met His Grace and went immediately when I saw uh, this beautiful service, ooh, I say, wow, that is wonderful. I saw, wow, I never, I've never seen such beautiful service like this uh, with all that, that priest and deacons and his grace was uh, celebrating this service. Ooh, that was wonderful. My son and me was very, very happy, very happy. And uh, when, um, after that, we invited his grace to come in Martinique uh, for a public meeting. So he came with, uh, with uh, their own Gabriel uh, Medin, Estwick, Deacon Estwick, General Secretary. They came together and they, they, hold, uh, they held a public meeting. And then from that, Plenty brothers ask for baptism. Uh, after some brothers from Martinique, brothers and sisters, went to Trinidad so they could be godfather, and uh, they came to, to, to they went to Trinidad to to get baptized, and uh, so that could they, they could be godfather and godmother of uh, of Jews. Who wanted to be baptized because plenty of people asked for bat baptism when they heard his grace uh, uh, presented the church. So plenty of people asked uh, to be baptized. Uh, then after that, his, his grace returned to, to Martinique with S. Gabriel Lac, Matas. Diakun Haile uh, Mikhail, Diakun Gabriel Selassie, and Diakun 
Gebre Medin last week. So they they came and now they baptize many people. We were organizing two sessions, one Saturday and one Sunday. For example, if the, the first day, uh, maybe it has 10, um, 10 godfather and 10 godmother, for example, or a little bit more. Uh, so if they were, we were 10, so the next day it had, it had 20 now godfather and god mother to uh, to sponsor uh, other brothers and sisters so it's grace and all the team uh, returned to martinique on june i think and several times uh, each six months maybe so we could have uh, plenty brothers and sisters but because of uh, the lack of a uh, member of clergy, uh, some uh, misunderstanding, some confusion uh, came among us. Um, so we could not keep all the, all the brothers and sisters. So we were meeting, we were trying to meet ourselves each month, but without discussing um the the doctrine and um we didn't know about the doctrine we were not uh, uh clergy members so that was uh, difficult and after that um slowly now we are reaching 2000 2000 uh, 2012 uh that i i could be uh ordained as a deacon and then 2014 uh as a priest and then immediately two other deacons could be ordained my nephew Isaac, and another brother also uh, deacon uh, so now at that time uh this Deacon Teclesilasi, he he went to to live in in France. Um, so we are now actually there is one Deacon and one priest. So we can keep a communion service uh, once per month, and uh, weekly we have a divine service weekly. Mm. We are among the now two two hundred uh, baptized uh, member, but as you know, uh, um, a little come regularly. Uh, but whatever the the work is uh, continuing, and uh, slowly we. We are not numerous every service, but we feel that uh, through the Holy Communion, we, we are more united. The members uh, who come now regularly are, are really, uh, uh, they, they know why, they know about, they know more about the doctrine. And uh, that is how uh, uh, the things uh, go here in Martinique. We we use uh, a, another a church um, which is not ours, but we have good relationship with the uh, Orthodox. That is the uh, Orthodox Western Orthodox. We have good relationships. Um, and uh, we can use the church uh, most as we wish. Of course, Sunday, we cannot use it Sunday morning because they use it for themselves. They have a priest and deacons also. 
So now our plan is to, to build our own church, but we have to uh, to reach some some stay some uh, uh, some uh, we are we have to yes to to reach some uh, some stage to be to be more united and to be more concentrated on that goal. Um, now, now I wanted also to speak about uh, the church uh, in Guadeloupe, how it is in Guadeloupe. Uh, this church had been um, the first uh, work uh, which has been done uh, by uh, uh, our brother Gabriel Lazé and his wife, Secretary Jesus Tirolien. Um, they, they invited His Grace, Abunet Adeos, to come uh, and to, to baptize also in. Uh, in Guadeloupe, so they were uh, receiving the clergy members uh, as Kesgebre uh, Amlak, Matas, and Deacon Haile Mikhail, Gabriel Selassie, and Dr. Medin last week. Uh, so so they, was, they were receiving them in their own home, and that is uh, how the Uh, the the congregation could uh, increase now they are like uh, we are like 50 50 around 50 um, baptized members in Guadeloupe and some also uh, who had been baptized else as well like in Paris or in Martinique some of them came to Martinique to get ba uh, baptized Uh, so um, they are. We are a small, a small group, but they are more implicated in uh, in that goal. Um, they, they are more because they are in the same same. Uh, they, you, you know, some of them they came um, sometimes for the retreats in Trinidad. Uh, they are they, they were knowing themselves before the church as as brothers so that is why uh, now they yes they, small but good uh, that is they are a good group very good group so that is we we hope now we will increase ourselves uh, in the building of our of our church That is uh, the, pre the presentation I could do about, uh, I don't want to keep you too long, uh, about uh, the establishment of, uh, of our church here in Martinique, Holy Trinity, and in Guadeloupe, uh, uh, Holy Michael, St. Michael. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kessel. Uh, as you had mentioned, uh, Kess Matas, Uh, would have done some business. If he is present, Kes Matos, would you like to just add any information based on your knowledge uh, as regards to the church in Guadeloupe and also Matni? Uh, good evening, uh, Your Grace and Achman Wright, Abagab Jesus, other holy fathers and brothers and sisters. Do I feel um, yes, uh, Gabriel Xavier said it all? You know, it's comprehensive and it's, I believe that is enough. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, so we now will give uh, opportunity uh, to speak as regards to the church in Antigua as was asked of me by uh, Archman Dry. Uh, so my name is Brother Paulus. I'm originally from St. Kitts uh, of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. And, and I was baptized in the faith in April the 10th of uh, Saturday, the 10th of April, uh, 1993. Uh, this is within the St. Mark and St. Bishoy, Bishoy 
Coptic Orthodox Church. So let me give you some information as how that transpired. You would have heard yesterday Abba mentioning that there was church established in St. Kitts and also in the Virgin Islands. It's mostly in St. Thomas, the island of St. Thomas. Uh, these two uh, brothers who were then ordained, one was ordained as Kess, which is Kess Tespasalasi Newman. He was ordained by Abona Yitzhak, and the church was established in St. Kitts. Uh, we do not have on record, I do not have a history of the name of the church, but uh, I remember when I was a little boy, the church was accommodated by the Methodist Church in Bastia, which is the city in St. Kitts. And I, was, uh, I grew up in the Methodist Church. And I will always remember that the church was in a hall, or which was then a school. So they would have service on Sundays, and then the school, which was boys' school, because at that time they didn't have the merging of the girls and the boys as yet in the education system, they, they would have service on Sunday and there would, there would be chanting and drumming that would um, resound and even sometimes drown out the Methodist church service because the two buildings was in the same uh, property. So you had the, the boys school, which is in Bastia, which was like a chapel, was used by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, then for Selassie, and then we had the main church, which was the Methodist church. So I always used to see them, brothers wearing white, sisters wearing white all the time. They were chanting. Uh, some of them would have luck, some of them did not, because I must say that at that time, though many of them would have come to the church as Rastafarians, they converted totally. They converted totally, even to this point. Uh, so I knew of the church when I was a small boy, remembering that, but I never got uh, into the church until, uh, like I said, in 1993. But what those times when the church were in the Methodist Church in Bastia, it was in the 1980s. A matter of fact, the history is that the church was established in 1982 with the visit of Kess uh, from Bermuda, uh, who was going around the islands at the time as an evangelist uh, at the um, authority of his eminence. So his eminence, as I understood it, uh, never actually came to uh, St. Kitts and Nevis officially, uh, but the then Kess would have traveled to Trinidad. He would have go, gotten instructions from then Abba Gabriel and Abba Hadis, uh, who is now Abuna, uh, his eminence, Abuna Tarios, and then he was ordained by uh, Abuna Isa. But the issue, as you would have heard also, Kess uh, will they dare it, mentioning about the watershed moment that schism that occurred, the great schism in the church, was again the reason why the Coptic Orthodox Church happened to be in St. Kitts. Again, that's another story because that's not really our history per se, uh, but suffice it to say, uh, there was uh, apparently some disagreement between uh, persons. Uh, uh, Kestas Fasalasi, he went to Ethiopia, he wasn't satisfied with what he saw or what he answers he got. And he said he got a call from Abuna Shenouda. He would travel to Egypt. He was rebaptized along with the Kess, who is now, who he was not uh, a priest at that time, nor was he a deacon, but then he was baptized and then he was doing a deacon. I forgot his name, name doesn't come to me. Uh, but then they were sent back uh, individually to St. Kitts and then to St. Thomas. And um, when Kestes Fasalasi, who then became Abuna Shenouda Newman, when he met with the brothers and sisters, he announced that he was no longer Ethiopian Orthodox. Uh, he was Coptic and those who were willing and were free to come. And of course, they, that scattered the flock because they said they were not Arabs, they were Ethiopians. And up to this day, uh, that is the situation. So I, I came to the church uh, based on my request to God in my communion with God, asking him to bring me to the truth. And he brought me to the church. I was an antagonist in the church. I served on the altar with him. Um, and then I saw certain things that developed. And, I, and that was an issue within that church. And then after that, I decided I will go to study. When I went to study, I went to University of the West Indies. And when I applied, uh, I looked at the three campuses. That was Cable Campus in Barbados, Mona Campus in Jamaica, and St. Augustine in Trinidad. And I decided 
that I will go to St. Augustine because it was named after a saint. I was not even aware about fully about the church in Trinidad. Uh, because when I told uh, Abuna Shinoda, who was then Kestas for Selassie, that I was going to Trinidad to study, he never told me about anything. It is when I arrived in Trinidad in 1996, so this is exactly three years after I would have been baptized. I met uh, my brother, brother, uh, uh, well, yes, was Coppin on campus and he informed me that there was a church and then he brought me to the, to his eminence. Uh, we spoke, I was accepted. Uh, I even lived on the church at uh, Mehi Alem with uh, Abba Tachin uh, from 1997 to 2001. Uh, and it was during that time, I too said, well, I am not an Arab, I am an Ethiopian. And from since 1997, I've been an active member in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. After concluding my first degree, which is agribusiness management at the University of West Indies, I asked Abba Tachin to allow me to go and see if I can establish a church in St. Kitts. So when I arrived, we established the mission. Uh, Kess Abraham Springer also visited uh, on our request to uh, St. Kitts. He also met with then Kess Tesfa Selassie, uh, who was now Abuna Shinoda. And based on that discussion, and I guess he would have reported to Abatachin, it was felt that there was no need to have conflict uh, be between the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and the Coptic Orthodox Church. And it was even encouraged that members should go to the Coptic Orthodox Church. But like I said, up to this point, only one person, one person who was baptized in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church is with the Coptic Orthodox Church. Uh, the other members at the time when he left the church was only his family, which was his wife and his uh, three, four sons and his daughter. So after I felt discouraged, I was disheartened. Uh, and then I decided by the Holy Spirit to leave St. Kitts and I went to Antigua in 2004. When I arrived in 2004, I was involved in all sorts of things, nothing to do with the church. I was distracted because like I said, I was, dis I was disappointed with not having to be able to establish a church in St. Kitts. And we had we done well. We already had a delegation who was willing uh, to come to Trinidad. We had already, I'm not, they did come to Trinidad, sorry. We had a delegation that come to Trinidad. We had about 20 members past members who were baptized who were ready to come, married members, but it is what it is. So I went to Antigua and it was on the 11th of September, 2007, which according to the church calendar, which was the double millennium, and the Holy Spirit told me to, for the Paulus, uh, to wake up, start to do work on the church. And that is when I, again, mobilized, organized, I, I wrote Abba Tachin, we, he said, he advised us what to do. We had our first delegation going to Trinidad. At, when we first decided to meet, we were meeting in my office. I had my own business, was in construction um, and also landscaping. Uh, and then I had my own office and we started to meet at the point. It's a place in, in St. John's called The Point. And that is where we had the first church services. According to the Kadasi, of course, we were advised what we can use, what prayers we can lead, holy scripture readings and the like. Then we went to Trinidad. At that first uh, visit, one of the member or one of the brothers and sisters got baptized, Waleta Selassie. Uh, she was originally born in St. Martin, but she lived in St. Saint, in Saint Kitts. Uh, and then after that, we had Abatachin, we had Abatachin come. Uh, and at the same time he came, the first meeting, before that, he called me and told me about a Archmandrite, uh, Archmandrite Gabriel uh, Mariam. And he asked if I, if you think we can take him? I said, yes. At the time, I didn't know if we could take him. We didn't have all the finances, but I did it in faith. And yes, God did the way. And so we, the same time our touching came, the same time Abba Gabriel Mariam came as well. Uh, Haile Mariam, sorry, came as well. And he stayed with us for a year and a half. Uh, at that time, we had 
two series of baptisms and two weddings. Um, uh, the first time, of course, as always, the Secretary General at the time, sorry, the present Sec Secretary General, they can, uh, uh, Gabby Midden, uh, Eswick, Eswick, along with uh, other members. Of course, Kess Abraham Springer was there. Uh, I must say before that, Kess Abraham Springer was the first to come. He came, and again, on request of us, to Trinidad, I mean, from Trinidad to Saint Kitts, um, to Antigua, and then we had lectures. We had lectures at the City View Hotel in Saint John, and it was at that time when he visited us down at the place which was my office where we were having church service. He gave us the icon of Saint Mary, and that was when the Holy Spirit had told us that the church will be Saint Mary, and from since then it has been Saint Mary. So thanks be to the to Kess Abraham Springer. Then, uh, like I said, our touching came with two of the separate times. Uh, we had many clergy that would have come. We had uh, Deacon Prescott at the time, who is now Kess Prescott. We had Deacon Archer, who is now Kess Archer. We had Abba, well, Deacon, well, um, Archman Drake, Abba Haile Mikkel. Uh, we had uh, Kess Matters. All, oh, a lot of, lot of work was done. And then we started to move from my office, and then we went to the Syrian Orthodox Church, uh, which was not their property. What happened? They were renting from a homeowner or a landowner, which had a property, and then we discussed with them to also use the property, and that's how we were now. We elevated from my office to the, the place where we have church service, with the altar and sanctuary. Then after that, uh, in 2000, and nine, in 2008, on the second time when Abba Touching came, uh, he um, anointed myself and Marcos, who is my godson, who is now Deacon Marcos, to be evangelists. Uh, Tess Marcos was there, he himself would say to me he was there, he witnessed that. And it was there that the work continued moving forward. After that, we had a lot of challenges, uh, suffice it to say, we, we developed the opportunity to get land uh, so that we can start to build our church. And it was then that we uh, started to put the foundation. We laid the foundation, concrete it, and then we took time and build it up. Now, I would like to say there was mention about um, uh, Ambassador Bruce Goodwin. Ambassador Ruth Goodwin, apparently at the same time, so you can see how the Holy Spirit uh, moves. At the same time, at the double millennium, he was the ambassador to Ethiopia on behalf of the uh, country or the, the nation of Antigua and Barbuda. He visited, he visited uh, Abuna, His Holiness Abuna Paulos. And he too, it was said to me by, after I didn't know about this, that he had asked for the establishment of the church. And then he was given uh, Abuna Tarius's contact, and then they spoke. But I, I must say, from since the time we began on the 11th of September to the point where we are, I, I, I can't say, I, well, it is what it is. So, so I thank God for whatever would have been done by him at whatever time. But I can tell you, it was a lot of work. We did a lot of evangelizing. We went all over the country. We had many meetings. We had many lectures uh, on the various times when Abba Touching came. The second time, we organized a lecture in Bendels, in the Bendels Primary School. Uh, that was well attended, uh, and we grew from stage to stage. And then in 2013, uh, Abba Tarachin would have also called Deacon Marcus at the time and find out if we can uh, facilitate uh, Abba, uh, another, another Ashman, right? Abba Gabriel Jesus. Uh, and then Deacon called me, asked if we can do that. I said, yes, any opportunity, we should never de deny. We should work it again in faith. And we, we, were, we managed a lot of developments that would have occurred during that time under his leadership as well. And a lot of uh, development which have led to the consecration of St. Mary of Zion, Ethiopian Orthodox Church. 14 years exactly after, uh, if you would have done the calculation, that's why you would have seen from 2007 
2021, 14 years, 14 years. It's, and of course done on the annual feast day of our Lord coming down and gathering his apostles to build a church for our Blessed Mother. So, so basically that's an idea of what transpired. Uh, you, it was a lot of work. Thanks be to God for his mercy. And uh, hopefully we will go from stage to stage. Um, presently, also, from the time when I was uh, involved, I came back to Trinidad to do my uh, law degree, my LLB. I stayed with Abatachin again. I, I still have a room there, but I've been out because of COVID. Um, and while there, I became the secretary of the Evangelical Services Department. And under our leader, under Abatachin's leadership, and also uh, the head administrator, we have ever been able to establish missions in Grenada, missions in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, of which when I had gone to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Abatachin asked me while there to see what I can do. I went down there, I met with some brothers and sisters. Uh, we also got the documentation, but strangely enough, St. Vincent was incorporated. The church was incorporated according to an act of parliament in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, even though we didn't have a physical church. So I was able to acquire that document, which I brought back with me to Trinidad and I gave it to Abatachin. And I met with brothers and sisters and we have a mission again, uh, reestablished in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And through our work through the Facebook page, we have now a mission in Brazil. We have a mission now in Argentina, a mission now in Cuba, and a mission now in uh, Puerto Rico. Now, when I say mission, it's, with, it's loosely, because of course, Abatachin will have to officially give them recognition, uh, but the processes have already been started where correspondences have been sent, uh, and hopefully we will hear more about that in the future. So thanks be to God, we can see throughout the whole presentation that the Holy Spirit moved. It is him that is working, not us. We are only instruments. And if we listen, he will tell us what he wants to be done for the glory of his name, for the salvation of the soul of others, and for the growth of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. That is my presentation. On behalf of Archman Dry Abba Gabriel Wode Nagatu, local administrator for Antigua and Barbuda. Now, we will open up this, the mics uh, for questions and answers. So we started at 5.30. It is now 7, basically almost 7.30. We will say we'll give 30 minutes the most, half an hour. So we'll conclude at 8, like we did last night. And we'll give you an opportunity to one, ask questions of any panelists or anybody. Um, you can also ask questions to anyone else who is in the audience. I would ask you to just raise your icon hand. Then you can unmute your mic and put on your camera so people can see you. Introduce yourself, where you're from, and then ask your question. And then we will see how best we can have those questions answered. What I will endeavor to do is ask persons to give about two or three questions at one time, and then we answer them like that, instead of one question and one answer, one question, okay? Thank you very much. The floor is now open. I acknowledge guest Gabri, guest Gabri Amlak, would you like to? To say something? Did you did you call Mr. Barrett? Did you call me? I saw I thought I saw your, your mic unmuted. Uh, I thought you wanted okay. to yeah. no um just um with um the presentation with the uh, Kes Gebleg Ziaber, mm -hmm. the priest that came with um Deacon uh well, now Kess Bailey, but at that time was Kess Wilde George's Bastin, who baptized Bahani Selassie. He was actually, you forgot the name, it was Kess Wilde, Wilde George's Bastin. Okay. Thank you very much, Kess. Thank, thank you, Kess. Kess Bastin was a, a, one of the, the early, earliest um, ordained local clergy in Trinidad. I, I, I had opportunity to meet him. He was a very loving and very wise man. And uh, can I can I can I say of course something else? Yes, of course. 
Uh, yes, I I forgotten because I I didn't prepare any anything for this for this presentation. Uh, I didn't know that I would have to to present uh, uh, the, uh, our church. So I have to say also I had some uh, I had forgotten to say also that from the time. Uh, where we had been baptized for, by his grace and Keske Abraham Lak and Diakon Tekle Medin, Diakon Haile Mikhail at that time and Diakon Gabriel Lase. From that time after that, no clergy members, but we, we, we could benefit of uh, the coming sometimes of some, some, some priests we were coming uh, for Easter, for um, for uh, so for um, uh, Christmas, uh, Easter, and sometimes where we were calling, they were we, they were coming. So we we had been supported uh, in a very good way, and after after that. Uh, from 2013, uh, uh, we could benefit of the coming of the uh, Keskebre Amlak Matas, who were coming uh, often in the, in the uh, often from uh, two times or two three times in the in the year, he was coming uh, to help me. To to be to be well acquainted with the liturgy, uh, which is very very deep and uh, quite difficult to understand, and then I, I I have to say that from 2013 until um, until not a long time ago, like uh, before the the virus, so he was coming every time uh, and uh, bapt he, he baptized many members of, of Martinique also and he was coming for wedding um, here in Martinique not only in Martinique but also in Guadeloupe also so, so I have to say that uh, that support um, strengthened, strengthened us uh, uh, very much and I don't know how I could do <laughs> if I didn't have this support uh, beside me, how to how I could do to to conduct such service, I don't know how I, how I could do. So uh, I have to uh, to thank him in in front of all you so you all to to know that Trinidad had made uh, his his duty by uh, supporting us, our desire uh, to, to get that liturgy, to get to, 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 to be able to, to take communion uh, regularly. Now it is monthly, but one time I know that it will be weekly uh, by the grace of God. So that is this contribution I wanted to, uh, to, uh, to, to tell you. Uh, to tell you that the, 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 the work that you are doing in general, because I know that you do it also uh, in other islands uh, like to, uh, Antigua and uh, Tobago and uh, Guyana, you support all the, the parishes, even in Jamaica, I know that the contribution that you, you had make. Uh, so that is why I wanted to, to thank you for, for that support, you we could benefit here in Martinique and, and Guadeloupe. Thank you. Yes, definitely. Kes Matas is a is a what can I say? You know, I, we can only say thank you. Trust me, Kes Matas. So you've heard it from the from the mouth. Okay. So, um, also, would like to ask brothers and sisters, uh, and also panelists, when you are uh, re responding, please. Put on your cameras. Remember, we are also recording uh, and we are also live so persons can see you. There's no need to hide anymore. 
so we like you to put on your cameras. I now acknowledge our head administrator, Abba Gabriel Jesus, Wolde Samuel Nagat. Thank you, Brother Paulos, uh, moderator. I just uh, want to speak one thing. It's left maybe the establishment of the church in Antigua and Barbuda. Most of us, uh, we know, since uh, uh, 2008 and so on. Uh, when we are mm -hmm. consecrated the church this year, the church, uh, since it's the establishment of the church, it was one four, which is 14 years, significant. Uh, but in the 18s, in the 18s, when Abu Nisak was Archbishop of the Caribbean and Latin America, in the 18s, I think 1982 or 19, in the 80s, it is 40 years almost, you know. Almost Sister Makeda Mikhail, she was telling me. She was the first founder member of the church in the 18th. Abu Nisak sent a missionary from Bermuda. Uh, the first name is, I think, Asgabrsla saying something. I don't know Bermudans, you can correct me. Uh, he came, you know, uh, at Antigua and baptized a lot of brothers and sisters. Uh, even when we are establishing the new establishment. Most of baptized members already are joining us because they already baptized, you know. They have names. They was, you know, strong uh, Orthodox standing uh, brothers and sisters, some of them, but uh, uh, it was not, you know, they don't have no standing person which is like a leading person as a clergy. It was even establishing a school, uh, even, you know, that lady was, she was, she's a strong woman, you know, she was putting money in by a big truck in the name of the church to generate money and so on. But the men give her a big problem, which is taking advantage of that thing, uh, you know, they use a truck for that instead to work the, the church. So because uh, as a woman, she was, to get no support, you know, the church was not continuing as it should continue. She was trying up and down representing the church in Antigua and in Barbuda many years. She was even participating in the early time when Abu Nisak was calling a uh, conference and so on. Even Abu, uh, His Grace Abu Natadios was telling me one time he met the Makira Mikel here, uh, here, I think in Bermuda, I think in Bermuda or Jamaica somewhere. He told me that, you know, they was participating in conference, conference together. So uh, just make sure to know, you know, in the fifth, 40 years ago, the church was established in Antigua at the same time during uh, the establishment of here in the Caribbean, especially around uh, Bermuda and so on. Uh, so that's what I heard, you know, so, but I don't know, this is what I got a history, I got a, a pictures, you know, uh, but, you know, he living in Bermuda, is not follow them up, you know, that's why they don't continue. So when we are, I especially when I am, um, you know, officially appointed Antigua and Bermuda priest in charge, you know, my, some of them, I met them, like for instance, Brother Paulos know them. Uh, Abina Savelowinge and her family, uh, Sister Kafai, which is Ganeta Mariam, and her children, all her children's baptized members, I found them, you know. Uh, so it was, you know, Sister Makira Mikhail, and so on. Some of them is already dying out and not anymore exist. So I just trying to add, uh, make sure to have you, you know, in information, the church in Antigua was established 40 years ago. Too. Thank you. Thank you. Again. Your hand. Thank you again. How to put up your hand? No, it's okay. Um, I will acknowledge him. Go ahead. Go, go right ahead, Ketsa Sir Raphael and Sister Amsari. Go right ahead. Uh, thank you, Brother Paulus. Good evening, Yamanin, Sabuna Thaddeus. Good evening, Archmandrike, Gabrielsus. Good evening, other Archmandrikes, Abba Haile Macau. Uh, Thank you, 
I would just like to take out a minute at this time to pay tribute to Cass Wode George's Bastion because I heard Cass Gabriel Amlak Matas mentioned his involvement in establishing the church in the Caribbean. He was very instrumental in us obtaining the building that we currently use as a church because he was here in 1984 when we entered into negotiations with the government to acquire the use of that building. And he was here when we actually got permission to utilize that building. So I would like to pay tribute to his memory and acknowledge what he did to help to forward the growth and the development of the church here in Bermuda. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kessins. Um, so the floor is open. Anyone else would like to ask a question, make a comment? Uh, now is the time, based on what you would have heard. Uh, I would like to uh, acknowledge the fact that we see that the church is all about integration, Caribbean regionalism and integration. Because when you would have heard yesterday that the first local priest for the church in Trinidad, for the first church in the West, was a Jamaican who was living in Trinidad. You would have also heard that uh, uh, Bermuda was the one who would have gone throughout the Eastern Caribbean, which is the smaller islands of the Caribbean, like St. Kitts and Nevis, Antigua, Barbuda, and the other small. And he would have gone around evangelizing and being back and having baptism. You would have heard also where even certain priests who are deacons, such as in Barbados, was born in Tobago but became one of the first local priests or one of the, the cadre of clergy who are serving now in Barbados. So again, you see the church is holistic and how the Holy Spirit works is not a respecter of persons. So please, if you have any questions, just raise your hand or you can unmute your mic, be acknowledged. If you have any comments, now is the time. Yes, I, I recognize Brother World Day Simba. Yes, greetings, please, Grace, Abba, Asman Joyce, Kesses, Deacons, brothers and sisters. Yes, I'll just have a, a, one question to you, Brother Paulus. Um, I think I heard you said something concerning someone left the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and went to the Coptic Church. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I did hear you say some, um, like they were rebaptized, or someone was rebaptized. Yeah, I don't want to, yeah, I, don't want I don't want to go to that. Um, I really, you know, I can't address oh, well, that. But that so my is, question is, is one baptism? So that's what my question Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I know this. I know this. Personally, like I said, that was not an issue that I had. But this was also one of the issues that scattered the flock when uh, the priest came back. Because they're saying, even if it was Coptic Orthodox Church, we are one church. And there is no need for a baptism. And, you know, like I said, I, 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 I would like to prefer to focus on the fact that um, we need to know, we now have a mission again, well, not again, a movement, and let's not say a mission, uh, to reestablish the church in St. Kitts. Hopefully, we'll move forward. But a lot of the brothers and sisters were so disappointed at the first time. They say, you come back again, they're going to tell, you know, it was, it was a challenge, really a challenge. But by God's grace, the Holy Spirit moves as he wills, and hopefully we'll see something happening. So I can't answer that, my brother. I thank understand, you. but it is what yeah, it well, is. Thank you for your contributions today. Thanks. I recognize uh, Ashman Dwight, uh, head administrator. Baba Gabriel. Thank you, Brother Paul. You have to answer if it is what it was happening because it's a serious issue. You know, we are at, uh, calling the Coptic Church is our sister church. I know the same thing. It happened in Bermuda. I don't know some of our elders, maybe clergy, Casus Raphael. Uh, or maybe because uh, Malaka Gannett can answer this question for us. If it is happening, this thing is even his grace was mentioned last time. This is uh, totally disrespect, you know. We know so, uh, what is our position with them. This, this is totally unacceptable. We are calling the one holy universal apostolic church, you know, we are in the same uh, or in the other churches. Now the Coptic church already accepts the Catholic church, you know. If any Catholic member 
former member if come to in the Coptic church, <laughs> they are not baptized. So this is totally, let me tell you, this is, this is a political issue. It's a color issue, you know? That's what it is. So uh, I think it's, uh, this is a serious issue not to hide it. It must be revealed, you know, how they are disrespectful people and in the way how they treat us, what does that mean? Yeah, let's know who, what is their position, how the way, how this must be addressed by the Holy Synod. Thank into, you. Thank you. Thank you. And that is true, Abba. I, I mean, that's why I, I have learned from the, from uh, as Abba Tachin, you know, not to speak too much about those things. Sometimes when I do, he, 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 he rebuffs me, so I don't want to. But uh, I know that when he had went to uh, America the other day, he met with his uh, his uh, uh, Archbishop brother, uh, his uh, his great uh, brother David, and I think he did say to us that he had mentioned this to in discussion with him as an issue. But it is always best to try to work things out, and hopefully it will resolve in the long run. But again, like I mentioned uh, last time, one of the other issues that I decided. Personally, or not, let me say I decided, the Holy Spirit guided me, is that when I did the research about the Coptic Orthodox Church, presently, as you know, the Egypt is totally Islamic. Before that, in the seven, up to the 7th century, Egypt was all Black people and was all Christian. Egypt was a Christian nation. Of course, you would have some uh, uh, some paganism, and but most part was Christian, and it was the first place to have the or first university or theological seminary or, or school. <laughs> but after the 8th, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th, and 11th century, when they were massacred and basic genocide, so the Copts are small, multi, more small population in Egypt itself. There's about 3 million. The largest percentage of the Copts in Egypt are in Aswan, which is Upper Egypt, going up to the Nile, up to lead up to Ethiopia, which are black people like me and you. So they what happens when the onslaught came by the by his Islamists? They moved up Nile, <laughs> but for some strange reason, though they are spiritual, though they are cops from original cops, though they are, have monks, then they are not elevated to the bishopric. Again, that is up to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Synod. But I find that strange. So the largest population of the cops in Egypt who have ancient that are connected to the ancient cops and none of them on the holy synod i acknowledge abba gabri sadiq then after that uh kest uh Elysium. greetings oh, oh, okay, abba, greetings. Oh, abba yes. hold on hold on sorry i think kest uh Elysium will be answering the question that abba had just asked so let kest uh Melek again at uh, Kessa Elysian speak first, and after that, you'll be your other. Okay? Certainly, certainly. No so problem. Go ahead, um, Kessa. Kessa Elysian? Yes, good evening once again, Brother Paulos. Uh, so, about the Chen of protocol already established, and thank you, Abba Gavit Sadik, for allowing me to, to go ahead. Uh, I just would like to say uh, um, um, thank you also in appreciation to as well as George Bastian. He came to Bermuda several times, I believe. During one of those times of his visits, he baptized me also. Uh, the first time when um, the church uh, priest said that there will be no more services here was my very first time. So there have been tribulations and there have been occasions of uh, 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 not really favorable conditions or situations, but they became part of what strengthened people to be uh, in the Holy Spirit and to be more uh, 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 willing and able to, to, to come to the church and to, um, to, to, to fight against uh, Satan and in, 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 uh, having a uh, Christian growth in their lives. Also, uh, more recently, uh, we have been uh, um, having to deal with uh, the Coptic churches present in, here in Bermuda. They are our brothers and our sisters. But uh, we could not understand why some of the members were saying that they that uh, uh, we need to be baptized again. Those members who are originally uh, Ethiopian Orthodox, they uh, converted or they um, decided to follow the, the, the Coptic faith, to follow in the Coptic church, and they were rebaptized. 
So we feel that because, uh, of course, uh, all of us are members of the Oriental Orthodox Churches, our sister church, we believe that um, uh, there is communion with, with us more than with the other Orthodox Churches, the Eastern Orthodox Churches, and there's a problem with the, the, this rebaptism. So uh, during the times when this was occurring, I had contact with uh, one of the, the Coptic deacons and through this uh, arranged a meeting with uh, uh, the Coptic bishop, uh, his grace, uh, Anba David, who came to visit Bermuda. He was willing to come and visit uh, once he found confirmation that uh, Abu Natarius was uh, coming to visit Bermuda. And he was greatly uh, pleased to come and uh, speak with and to meet with Abu Natarius and to talk about the relationship with our churches. Through this, it has been established that uh, relations with uh, the Coptic Church here in Bermuda, where uh, those uh, deacons who are uh, more or less in charge, there's no resident priest here for the Coptic Church, that um, we remain uh, um, uh, in con conversation and in, in knowing uh, about the situation with our brothers and sisters here in the church. They, they, uh, Anba David, uh, Bishop Anba David, has requested to know background of the persons who were previously or who are uh, baptized Ethiopian Orthodox to come to uh, the, the, the Coptic Church because <clears throat> some of them were being ordained, some of them were uh, uh, being baptized again. And through this, through this uh, ecumenical relationship and through this understanding, uh, between the bishops, there has become a settlement, and uh, and uh, we are looking to for the best of each other in, in our churches. And so, uh, although it's a it's a distasteful thing to happen, I believe that maybe through miscommunication, I'm not sure how it developed into the the point where as uh, members were uh, rebaptized uh, in a sister church. But it has more or less been been ironed out, and we are looking to to a better communication amongst amongst each other. Also, I cannot speak much to uh, the, the, um, the point which I'm hearing again and again of uh, as, uh, 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 the former uh, Ethiopian Orthodox priest who became Coptic Orthodox. He was uh, traveling in the Caribbean and, and uh, uh, evangelizing and baptizing. I'm sure this, uh, I, I think this, this has happened, but I cannot confirm that. Maybe some of our uh, older members can confirm they're visiting uh, with, throughout the Caribbean, I was, um, I don't think I was a member of the church at that time, but uh, maybe they can speak to that because it's a history. So we have to be thankful for how the Holy Spirit worked through whomever. And uh, thanks to God for this opportunity to speak again. Thank you. Thank you. We will um, go now to Abba Gabri Siddiq. And while that Abba is speaking, maybe a member from the Bermuda uh, congregation can uh, speak to that issue that you have just raised, Kess, about, uh, I forget his name, but I can see in his fair skin. I've seen pictures of him many times uh, doing this. So hopefully we get some information about that. So Abba Gabi Sadiq. Uh, yes, I ask for all my brothers and sisters, fellow clergy, not to be, feel upset over this issue. Because I think, because we have, we have to remember again that God is in complete control of everything. So what we should ask ourselves, Oh Lord, what can I learn from what just happened? Meaning our relationship with the Coptic Church. What can we learn? And what is God trying to tell us through all of this? And let us go back, let's look inward and let us look at our own family relationship. Uh, if we have a large family, don't we have some brothers and sisters that are jealous of us? Or don't, don't we have brothers and sisters that we might be jealous of them? It's the same thing. It's sort of like a family affair. A uh, good example, is like I said before, what, what happened with Cain and Abel, then what happened with Jacob and Esau, then what happened with Ishmael and Isaac, uh, jealousy. Uh, I, and it's also very personal too, not so much with us, but between Abuna Karelios and uh, Abuna Shenouda. They're both passed, but I think with Abuna Shenouda, he regretted the, the uh, some of the things that Abuna Karelius did in so far as allowing Ethiopia to, to separate itself and become independent from the Coptic church. I feel that if Abuna Shinoda was in power at that time, he never would have done it. I think that's what it's all about. So it's not so much between Shinoda and ourselves, but between Shinoda 
and Kirillios. Because every patriarch has a different perspective, a different view on things, although the, the dog and the cannon lords are the same. It's like, for instance, you go, your, 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 uh, your nephews come to your house and they come to eat. And, and then while you're cooking, the nephew says, oh, my mother didn't cook it that way. Oh, your mother doesn't know what she's doing. I, I, I know how to cook. I can cook better than she, she cooked. That's what you're dealing with right now. I had the same situation that you have in Bermuda and that you have there with my relationship with the Catholic Church. But I decided to turn it uh, uh, to the advantage of the Ethiopian church because it's all, it's all uh, uh, jealousy. So I just basically let God handle everything. But basically what you're looking at with the Coptic church is a very rich culture. It's not richer than ours, but a very rich culture and a very rich church that's able to help us as long as we know our place in the sense that we let them be the superior and we be the subordinate, jealousy. So I think what we have to figure out is how to deal with that the way we would deal with the situation in our own family, how to deal with our brothers and sisters still keep the family together. A good example of what I'm trying to say is the situation in Jerusalem. Because originally the, 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 uh, the monastery was under the Ethiopian church, but the Coptic church tricked us out of it. So now we, we are on the roof instead of being inside the sanctuary. So uh, I don't have a clear answer, but I, I'm, just I, I'm just saying that this is a test that God is giving us. A another example is what happened with, with Job and his wife. Remember, his, his wife said, why don't you just curse God and die? I think that's, you can parallel that with the, with the cops baptizing Ethiopians all over again. It's a matter of, they're saying, it's, it's, again, it's, to them, it's a matter of superiority. Uh, that's what I wanted to say on that issue. But uh, just leave everything in, in God's hands, like uh, his, uh, his eminence, uh, Buna uh, Thaddeus said, because God will handle everything. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you very much, Abba. Um, I now recognize Kes Ama Selassie Yaakov. Thank you, Brother Moderator. Um, I want to raise a related issue. This has to, I think it has to do with our record keeping and how we have after baptism been in contact or not with the persons who have been baptized. Recently, we have a situation where one, I might say middle-aged sister from Guyana, being in Barbados, visited our church. And she said that her mother was a member of our church. But she doesn't know if her mother took her as a child to get baptized. So that put me in a position that I don't know exactly how to deal with this sister because she, she comes as a visitor because she doesn't know she's a member of the church. And I'm thinking that if many people have been baptized in, say, in Jamaica by the thousands and so on, that maybe we need to make sure that we have the records in place that if someone comes as a visitor, not knowing what happened to them as a child, and they might have been baptized, that we could be in a position to not end up in a rebaptized situation. I don't know who can um, answer that kind of situation. Good question. Um, I will leave that to the head administrator who can direct it to wherever it needs to be directed. Abba, Gabrieletu? Yes. Yes. I'm not sure I understand the way the question. Yes. Okay. So, properly, maybe I'm not to get it properly. Yes. So, Cases was uh, concerned uh, on the issue of rebaptism by the cops. It now dovetailed to possible rebaptism within the church because we do not have all the necessary documentation of members. So you have a situation where a sister came and visited Kudus Paolo's church in Bridgetown, spoke to Kessis, told him that his, her mother was a baptized member, but she did not know if after her 80 days she was baptized. So because she doesn't have 
any documentation and now her mother has passed. So she wanting to participate and to become a member, she don't know if she needs to be, Kes don't know if she needs to be rebaptized or, sorry, she don't know if, if, she, if she was baptized already, and if so, to be accepted into the flock, or if not, whether to baptize her. And that is the concern here. So where she, where she come from? She don't have no any witnesses, mostly about that she needs use this wisdom, witnesses, any church members. Where she come from? Guesses? I said she came from Guyana. From Guyana? Yes. So if she was from Guyana, I hope uh, she was not participating before sometimes in the church? I don't know because she's living in Barbados now. And I don't know if she participated in Guyana. She doesn't remember because that, that would have been in, in her childhood. Her child, that, that's all. That's all what she knows once she, her childhood. She, she, knows, she, knows, she knows that her mother was a member, and I suppose her mother might have taken her, but I don't know if she was baptized. If she don't, no, no, she have to tell you exactly if she, her mother told her when she was a baby, she was baptized. If she didn't tell her, we cannot guess, you know, she have to baptize. If she told, she told by her mother, she was baptized, you know, that will be a witness. Her mother will be a witness for her. She don't have to lie. Yes, yeah, yeah, I, I understand that. Um, mm -hmm. But her mother is not available. I think her mother would be, would be in the United States. Would be in the United States. She um, alive? Yes, I expect she's an elderly woman because the woman who came, the woman who came to us, is not exactly a young person. So that's an elderly woman. And sometimes and they, they, don't, they don't remember. <laughs> they don't remember. No, no. See, this is. See, I'm saying this. If her mother told her she was baptized when she was a baby, whatever, she has that story told by her mother, that will be a witness. But you, she cannot say just her mother baptized, so I can't be participate, that cannot work. She, you have to baptize her because if even her mother was not taught her, you know, we don't have no, no witnesses. Yes, I, un I understand, I understand that. She must have a witness. She told by her mother, but she don't have no, any documentation to present. No problem that her mother will be a witness for her, you know? Uh, if she was not told even by her mother, that's another thing. She don't know anything, just, you know, just I guess maybe if maybe I am baptized because my mother is baptized member, you know, most of the parents is not uh, active that much, you know, to baptize their children, especially because of a parent problem, which is maybe if the father disagree and so on. So uh, uh, better not to, better to guess, you know, better to baptize her, you know, because if she don't have even told by her mother, you know. May, may I suggest that maybe uh, Abba and uh, Kessis can discuss this matter uh, privately? Brother Paulus, I wasn't raising it just for Barbados. I was saying, what I'm saying is, we may have cases like this around the, the archdiocese where because persons were baptized many years ago and they were not told you were baptized as a baby or something like that. Because as, as you know, in Jamaica, thousands were baptized and thousands are not functioning. Yeah. So how do you know that some people that come and visit the church were not baptized? But what I would, they were baptized as children. What I would say to you, um, uh, Kess, is like, for instance, when my time, when I was with, when I was in Jamaica, one of the projects that we had uh, put down as one of the, uh, the goals for the interim committee was to have a re-registration process. Uh, unfortunately, that has not been uh, implemented as yet. But this is something that needs to be done. I know in Trinidad as well, uh, that has uh, been completed, I think, by now. Uh, I think about two, three years ago, uh, it was given as a project to be done uh, to update the, the, the data uh, and also to move uh, towards having it electronically uh, preserved. So these are things that, of course, needs to be done from the administrative level, but not just the administrative level of the archdiocese. I would say from the administrative level of the local administrators who need to see how best they can do that, especially while persons are alive. So um, your point is well noted. I will now recognize Sister uh, Anika. Sister 
this good afternoon. afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon to everyone. Good night. Good, well, good night, sorry. So I want to ask a question based on, I just, I'm asking because I just want to understand, right? So based on the question about the baptism, you were the lady who um, was baptized as a child but didn't know that she was baptized or can't give an answer because she's not too sure. But I thought that baptism was when you get older and you're conscious that you are a sinner that you want to be baptized and show the world by that action that you change your course of life by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And I'm thinking if a baby is baptized, then what does a baby know about sin and needing a Savior? So that's my question pertaining to that baptism story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First, um, let me just uh, say that uh, I know this sister, she's not a baptized member. She's interested in the church and she, she has invited, she was invited to attend. So to answer your question quickly, uh, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, according to the tradition of our Holy Fathers, of the prophets and also of the apostles, uh, and according to the Holy Scriptures as well, the baptism of a soul is not dependent upon the age of the soul. So when a child is born, as it was in the Old Testament, after 40 days, if it was a boy, or 80 days, if it was a girl, they would be consecrated to the church. They would be brought to the Holy Temple. Of course, eight days after the birth, the boy would be circumcised. But in terms of consecrating themselves to the Lord, to God, they would be brought to the Holy Temple on those days. So that also shows where even in the Old Testament, to become a member or a body, a part of the body of the commune, those nations that worship God and who are acknowledged uh, by God as his people, the children were also included. The same now results to the, that was the shadow. Now we have the reality with Christ coming. He also said, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. So when a child is born to a Christian parent or a Christian family, it is expected that that family will bring up the child as they were going, they will not deter from it. Now, yes, you may say, well, look at the situation. The situation is indeed a unique one because for whatever reason, um, this particular sister was not aware whether she was baptized or not. Now, just to answer your question as to infant baptism, it is, it is scriptural, it is also uh, traditional, it is also founded on salvation because if you as a child or you as a parent realize that as Christ said, unless a man be born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. You as a true mother or a true father will want to save your child and therefore even at birth, you need to have that ensured. And while you are ensuring as a Christian mother or father or parents that the child is baptized, you will bring them up in the spiritual way of life. So I hope that answers your question. I hope it answered your question. Uh, if it's not satisfactory, we will discuss it next time. Don't worry, we'll go further into the scriptures further, okay? Any other question? Any other comment? Anybody else could? Okay, I see we'll listen back. He uh, also raised Romans chapter 3, verse 23, and Romans chapter 6, verse 23. So sister, you can look at those scriptures. Uh, for your edification. Any other question on the presentation? We kind of swayed a little bit. The time is now five minutes past eight. Uh, so I will ask again for the last, is there any questions or comments that anyone would like to ask or raise? Now is the time. Greetings, good night. Good night, go ahead my brother. Yes, um, I just wanted to make a comment uh, pertaining to the the history that Kes Amhas um, Salase gave on the history of the church in Barbados. Now it's very it is it, touching to see that everywhere Jesus Christ went, he made news, you know, and it's very striking to me to see that even the governor general at the time, the Amita Barrow, leaving her sick bed to come and meet. 
the abuna, you know what I mean? It's very, that bespeaks of the humility, you know, uh, 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 the real man should really be, you know? So as I say, Yes, wherever Jesus Christ and he children go, there's always very good news. So I give thanks for these few words. Thank you very much, brother. And it is important to note is so much of the respect that she has as the head of the state for the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and also for our spiritual father at the time, uh, his holiness of Buddha Paulus. I now acknowledge Kes Gabriel, uh, Kes Gabriel Amla Matas. Yeah, good evening again to everyone. Um, my as this was one of the um suggestions we had and was a it was, it was partially agreed upon the history of the of each uh, parish in the diocese the establishment because on our on our web page we have each of these on a separate you know the ident the where they're from like the different part where they come from so there, these things should be documented properly and put on our webpage. So when someone, let me say from Martinique, when they, 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 they go on the site and they, they are visiting Martinique or anywhere, they can see the history of the church in Martinique or uh, Guadeloupe or Antigua, whatever. So I, I am suggesting that, that these things, while we speak it here, it should be documented and put on our web page so that for future references and sometimes uh, for, because I see in Trinidad sometimes university students come to ask about the church, the establishment, when it start. So just the same way now, the, in all the islands, it should be done. That is just my um, take on it, thanks. Thank you very much, Kat Matas, and that will indeed be done. I'm out of the Evangelical Services Department uh, in collaboration with the executive had already appointed uh, uh, Lekete Kwan Keklamayam Green with the responsibility to uh, compile the history so we can have it published in a book. But yes, uh, even subsequent to that, uh, we should encourage each local administrative area to, de de to devise their history and have it compiled. Any other question, any other comment, any other contribution? Now is the time. Going once. Um, Brother Paulus, I was just, you know, I was just suggesting, I know the time is done over, but concerning what the sister asks about the baby, you know, you, I mean, we could enlighten her concerning the Adamic sin, because that's why the baby have to baptize, you know, because all have that sin, you know. Well, yeah. indeed. Because yeah. that's the main reason there, really. That, yeah. is, indeed. that is indeed. So, sister, what uh, brother will the Sambat is pointing to is that from the birth, of the child coming into the world from the breach of his or her mother's womb, they inherit Adam's sin. And so baptism is not just a matter of uh, affirming your faith in Christ, but it's also getting rid of that uh, Adamic sin so that the truly the soul could be purified, to be pure without sin, just as it was when Adam was created in the garden before he fell. So that is again, just a short synopsis. This is not the time I would like to encourage you to come every Wednesday, sorry, every Friday, uh, using the same Zoom platform at seven o'clock. We have Bible uh, study on these issues. Going once, any more comment? Going twice, any more statement? Going three times, any more questions? That being said, I will now give the opportunity for the presenters to give closing remarks. And then at the end of that, we will have a Mesmo song by one of the members, and then we will close. So I will first start with Kes Igzeavir, and then Kes uh, Amar Salasi Yaakov, and then Kes Aelizion, and then Head Administrator, uh, and in that order. Kes Igzeavir, closing remarks. Yes. Could you put on your camera for the last and uh, give your closing remarks, please? All right. Uh, okay. Give me a minute. Okay. 
Okay, Kes, while you are preparing, I will now ask Kes Amasalasi to give closing remarks. Are you, are you hearing me? Loud and clear. Thank you, Brother Moderator. And I just want to express my appreciation to those who provided this opportunity for us share some of our history also to express our appreciation for the work that his grace has done because as i said when we set about to get this church established in barbados it was to his grace abuna Thaddeus that we wrote and he has been with us supporting us some he's come from time to time and it's not been easy it's been difficult i know and when he could not come himself, he always sent. And so this is my appreciation, our appreciation for his grace work continuing with us. Also I express appreciation to, uh, to all those who have been involved in the establishment of the church in Barbados, not just from 1990s, but even going back when, as I, as I indicated, there was the family who lived here in Barbados and went to church in Trinidad. Thank you very much to everyone. And Thank you, Kes. Now we go to Kes Xavier, if he's ready. Uh, yes, uh, good evening uh, to everyone. Um, I just uh, would like to say that uh, um, I thank uh, for our establishment um, that is not easy for us because we are French speakers and um, I could see the work and uh, the work of of God through His uh, His servants. Everything was I told you from Ethiopia how the Spirit of God make everything possible. And after that, when His grace came to Martinique, to Guadeloupe, baptized uh, with. Uh, other priests and deacons. When they can, can come to Martinique, they, they, they was received by my parents in, in their own home. My parents are, were because they died, uh, they, they were Catholic, and, but they were very happy to receive his grace and uh, with Kes uh, Gebra Amlak, Deacon Gebra Medin, Abahele Mikael, who was Deacon at that time, as well as Kes Gebra Selassie, who was Deacon also at that time. But they were very, 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 very happy. I tell you, when this team were coming home, my parents was very, very, very happy, I tell you. And uh, they, br they brought joy at home and we were very happy. We spent uh, times uh, that we will not be able to, to forget. And um, just to tell you that every, everything is on, on, on the end of the Almighty which uh, organize everything to make the, the all things possible. And uh, with this contribution also of all, all uh, the clergy members who came here in Martinique uh, to, to help us. And that is not easy because 
these clergy members has uh, their own lives in Trinidad, their own families that they are taking care of. So they let everything. I, I just I just want to to emphasize uh, this point because uh, sometimes sometimes we don't uh, see the these efforts uh, that uh, such servants are doing to serve uh, people uh, to um, to show more and more the glory of God on earth, and uh, this was made this was made possible because of that efforts. And even in in Ethiopia, uh, when we say that the the what they they have done for us and the the work that such people is doing without asking any money. They don't ask any centim, nothing. And they let their own families and everything, they let everything, they organize their, their lives to serve people. Even among the clergy members in Ethiopia, they are very uh, uh, surprised and they are happy to know that such people serve his people, serve God in that way. They, they, are, they, they are very happy to know that. And I want to emphasize this point and to, to tell you, to tell to my brothers in, uh, in Trinidad or whatever uh, other islands that uh, you have the chance to, to, to live near such people uh, who serve his, 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 his people without, uh, with love, true love. That is a love. Uh, uh, we, we cannot measure that, uh, uh, that love that they, they show to people with humility. And often, because that is, that is our fight, uh, uh, what they, they have in return sometimes is uh, that they, 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 they have to fight against another, another force, uh, another power which does not want them to do that uh, they are doing. So we have to help them as we can. We have to help each other uh, as we can in the true love that our God and our, and our Savior Jesus Christ shown us. That is the main uh, mission that we have to accomplish is to follow the step of our Lord uh, who came without uh, any, any glory. He came to suffer, to serve us, that, uh, that our now we have to go further, uh, to, to go uh, in his state, to try to, to, to help others as we can in humility and uh, in the true love. That is all I wanted to, to add. Thank you very much, Kessel. And indeed, you're so right. We have to thank them for their sacrifice. May God give them a reward in the heaven. Now we go straight to Kess. Uh, hi, Lizion. Good evening, one and all, once again. Uh, I'm really humbled to hear the, some of this information, which I um, <clears throat> already knew, but for all of us, it's very humbling to see and to hear the establishment of our Ethiopian Orthodox Church and the st struggles that uh, have occurred in each country, the, uh, the hard times and the, and the most meaningful times that have happened through the, the guidance of our, the Holy Spirit in uh, bringing these uh, uh, the faith to the, the countries uh, uh, within the archdiocese of the Caribbean and Latin America. 
um, truly humbled to hear uh, in detail of, uh, of uh, even in my own country, of uh, what took place. And uh, this is history. It is good to, important to see uh, what took place before us so we can appreciate uh, <clears throat> our steadfastness and our, uh, our willingness to continue in the future. We learned this uh, past week from canon laws that, uh, with as is a uh, Saifu Selassie, that uh, it was through dis disagreements with uh, circumcision that brought the first canon laws. And uh, through the times of our lives, through the times of, of, of our churches being established, we have shown that um, the adversary in many ways has uh, been uh, always there, but uh, nothing can be. Uh, successful against the, if the Holy Spirit is with you. So please, brothers and sisters, continue in your walk. We're thankful for uh, our Archbishop of Natalios for uh, um, the, the, being inspired by the Holy Spirit to have this uh, forum where we can share in each country the, the, our, our, our struggles and appreciate what has been done for all of us, for our community, for all of those living in our country. Those who we don't know at the time are, will be members of our church and members and believers in our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, to be thankful for uh, all of us and those who have come before us for a struggle that has happened and we are <clears throat> more equipped. We should be happy to continue. Although sometimes uh, the rewards are, as we may see, uh, it's, a, it's a thankless um, effort, but thanks to God for all things. He has given us free things that we have been in need of food, shelter, clothing, sunlight, and uh, and uh, the, our faith, our Ethiopian Orthodox Church. So thank you, and uh, let's continue, and let's go from strength to strength, bearing fruits, uh, 30, 60, and 100 fold. Thank you. Thank you, Kessens. And now, our head administrator, Komos Akmanjai Alagabi, which is with the family. Archman are you there? Okay, it seems as though he may have been knocked off. Uh, well, let me say on behalf of myself and him then, uh, we thank uh, first and foremost Almighty God, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to the power of the Holy Spirit who governs this church uh, for allowing uh, the coming of the church to the Western Hemisphere and by extension and Tegan Barbuda, uh, St. Kitts and Nevis, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Brazil, Argentina, Cuba, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, Guadalupe and Martinique, Bermuda, of course, Jamaica, Guyana, and Trinidad and Tobago. Thank also our eminences. May God bless our archbishops, Abuna Athanasios. Abona Isaac, and of course, Abona Tarios. Also thank our patriarchs, Abona Basilios, Abona Theopolos, Saint Abona Theopolos, and of course, Abona Saint Eclahaminot, and Abona Paulo. And of course, I must thank all the Archmandrites who would have come to, all the Ethiopian fathers who would have come and passed and served here in the West. And I would like to ask each and every one of you to remember them in your prayers, those who have gone before and those who are present with us. It is in this light that we must keep up the faith by living it, not just speaking of it, we must live it. May we also get the zeal of the Holy Spirit to teach it and to preach it, to evangelize, and that we may be full of joy. Unmuted mic, Brother Palos. Unmute your mic, Brother Palos. 
sorry, that was accident. Uh, I don't know what you all would have heard last, but I, I said that we didn't get a chance to hear from Lekka Tech One, Reclamaram Green, who was the former Secretary General of the Archdiocese of the Western Hemisphere on uh, Bona Aita. But at some point in time, we will hear from him. I'm sure he will, he will give a lecture about his experience and also to give his advice as what we can see going forward into the future. Uh, I would like now to uh, ask that uh, if there are any announcements, I will ask now either the Sec Assistant Secretary General uh, to make any announcements, if there is any, or like a tech one. You can hammer it, please, Assistant Secretary General. Thank you. As that I've seen announcements. You can hammer it, Mari. Okay, um, same as well. I'm not hearing him. Maybe you can go ahead about the power. Okay, so just for your information, brothers and sisters, as always, tomorrow, which is Monday, the 18th, sorry, the 16th, from 6 30, divine service at Mehdi Alem. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I would need clarification on this. Um, are we having streaming live uh, service from David Gennett Emmanuel? Because I think I remember hearing earlier that it was going to be from Mehdi Alem. Can I get clarification, please? Hello, anyone? Okay, we'll get clarification on that, but all you have to do is to log on on the platform and you will definitely see who is being streamed. At 9 a.m. to 11, we continue with clergy training, which is going to be done by Kes Gabriel Amlak Matas and Kes Amar Selassie and, Kes, and Archman Dry Abad Tito on pastoral care in the time of COVID-19. That's from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Then we'll have Sunday school, as usual, for the youth from 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. And then from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., we have Deacon Jesper Mikhail Williams from the U.K., from the United Kingdom, uh, giving a presentation on elections uh, for that day, which is tomorrow. So again, these are your announcements. We ask you to remember all of us in prayer, especially our, ch our church, our patriarchs, Abuna Makarios, Abuna Matthias, our Archbishop Abuna Thaddeus, and our church in Ethiopia and all over the Caribbean, and Latin America, and the world, and each of the organizing committee who has been doing an excellent job thus far. So may God continue to bless you. I will now ask uh, for a closing prayer. Uh, is Abba the head administrator? Is he left or if he is not there? I, I will take the opportunity to ask Is Abba Haile Mikkel there? Abba Haile Mikkel, are you there? Greetings. Yes, Abba Haile Mikkel. So we will ask you to close this prayer, please. Good okay. evening, Brother Paulus. Before we close in prayer, would you please confirm to us whether Bermuda will be presenting the divine service in the morning? That's a good question, uh, Deacon Amare. All I can take one. We have been preparing, but uh, we'd like to be notified. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, if there are no changes, then um, Guyana will continue. Um, Bermuda will continue. I just want just wish to um, highlight one slight um, observation. Uh, Guyana at present is under the leadership of the local administrator, Abba Gabriel Mariam, who did a tremendous work in Guyana. And I, I, I think we didn't really highlight him in our, in our, in our recognition of the, of, the, of the current situation. So I just like, I, I think we should remember, I remember him in prayer also for the Tremendous work he's trying to redevelop Guyana. 
Abba Gabriel Marian, our Holy Father, the local administrator and premier, and we wish to really um, live in prayer for the, the challenges that lie ahead of them. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Tekwan. Very noted indeed. Uh, Abba? Close us in prayer, please. Okay. First, I want to thank all those that um, are represented today. Let me just want to address this concerning the history of the church. We thank God that His church is being established throughout the world. As the psalmist said, that Ethiopia is stretching for the hands unto God. In what way? To her church which will be going to every country so that people can know their spiritual background. So we thank God for all those who presented the history of their country. And may God continue to bless us and keep us in no other name but any more Lord and Jesus, Jesus Christ. Bless us, may I have a well and trust you so I do a mark. Amen. Almighty God, our Father, we give thanks and pray that we have gathered here on this wonderful presentation with our sister churches. We ask the God to be with us all, do not forsake us or leave us, strengthen us so that we may continue to serve the in spirit and in truth. Be with us all, all, all our brothers and sisters who are fighting to help establish their church in their country. We ask the God to strengthen them, continue to enlighten them so that they may serve you in spirit and in truth. Be with us, God, and protect us for thy name's sake from this time forth even be forevermore. And let whatever we say or do, O God, in truth and righteousness, that it be a fruit in us, remaining not one, only but increasing 30, 60, and 100, O oh, to Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. O oh, peaceful King of peace, Jesus Christ, grant us thy peace and conform unto us thy peace and forgive us our sins and make us worthy to go out and to come into our homes in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. I thank you. Thank you very much, Archman Wright. And as we close, we'll ask Sister Leanna. Could you close us with a mesmo, please? Sister Leanna, if you can. Thank you, Brother Fathers. Good night, everyone. Rasma, go around. Roman Fescadu, Sahadram Lakamen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Christian 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 Say Ethiopia, say Ethiopia, better Christian. I saw her, the house of Christians. I love her, the house of Christians of Ethiopia. Of Ethiopia, the house of Christians. Samare Manaitin Yasemalin, a God make us ahead the hymns of the angels. Thank you very much, friends. Okay, my brothers and sisters, our fathers, thank you so much. God bless you all. Have a good night until we see each other in the morning, God willing. Good night, God bless.